No. Should I start oh. over again? Yeah, I'm sorry. It, I, I, uh, it's been a couple, I guess, a few weeks, and I was like, oh, we're not recording. Oops. All right, let me start over again. Um, and let's see. Pursuant to. <laughs> you I'm me? sorry. Um, Jen just reminded me to um, state the time for both okay. the start of the meeting and the end of the meeting. So. Okay. Um, it is 6.04 p.m. Um, I am, do I call the meeting to order before or after I do all of the reading? Now I'm confused. Yeah. I'm all off my game. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. So, um, I think you can, you can do the reading and then call the meeting to the oh. order. So okay. that it's recorded. Uh. Okay, so it's now it's 605 <laughs> pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via zoom or by telephone see instructions below. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so i'm going to make sure everybody can be heard. Starting with co-chair Demetria Shabazz. Can you hear me? Yes, hello, I'm here. Sorry, it's a little late. Thank you. Um, I have Miss Pat. Yes. Thank you, I can hear you. I have Deborah. Yep, I'm here. Thank you. I have Freke. Present. Thank you, and Philip. Here. Okay, so we are all here. We can all hear and be heard. Um, does any does anybody have any announcements? I just have a a, a question because um, I've had to access some of the um, YouTube records of of these meetings. Um, is there a way to make sure that the subtitles um, show up on this meeting and that when it's sent and uploaded to YouTube, that those subtitles are also made available? You have to actually set that in the recording properties. So uh, I have no idea what the correct answer is to that um, question. Um, and in, in none of the prior meetings have I been told to like change the recording settings and it's all been, my understanding is that it was, all of those settings have been done sort of automatically, but I can check with uh, Jen who is really in the background for this sure. meeting and also with IT. Um, but I'll be taking the notes for um, the meeting and um, I well so. so so it's really about accessibility as well so that's mm -hmm. that's why I'm trying to um, Jennifer usually is pretty good at you know with those settings up ah, her hands up there we go Jen you have an answer for me yes yes I can I'm on my phone so it's a little bit harder for me to figure out Okay. But I, I couldn't hear on my computer downstairs, but I can still access. So I will switch it momentarily and then um, remain on the phone, if that I makes sense. It. Yeah, and then when it's uploaded to make sure that the subtitles are also accessible. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you, G. I see Ms. Pat has her hand up. Hi, everyone. So I talked to... Um, the health department, our town health department, one of the staff. And she mentioned that um, on Monday, December 5th, that folks, some folks from Boston will be coming down to administer, um, that there will be COVID vaccination with $70 uh, gift card or something like that. So spread the word. Um, so I just wanted to share that um, just to, you know, motivate people who haven't been vaccinated to come at Banks Community Center in Amherst. I believe it's $70 gift card or $75, I'm not sure. So okay. thank you. Thank you for that, Ms. Pat. Um, Sorry, where did you say it's happening, Ms. Pat? 
um, uh, COVID vaccination. But where, where? December 5th at Banks Community Center. Oh, I think, okay. The only difference is that uh, whoever shows up and get vaccinated that day will get $70 gift card. I think it's 70 or $75, I'm not sure, but people could use it for holiday shopping. How about that? <laughs> so spread the word. Um, any other announcements? Oh, sorry. Nope. Okay. Um, the next thing is agenda review. So we will approve minutes, um, public comment, member reports, action and discussion items. Um, I am wondering if we can move item E, which is the CRESS and DEI updates to the beginning of our action and discussion items so that we can hear first from those departments um, and then move on with the other items that are listed the first we can also change this order if people feel strongly about moving things around um, but there's proposed cameras at the new elementary school this was a request that came in with um, from a member of the school committee that we perhaps discuss this since it does have to do with safety and security at the school um, an update on amherst nine then there's the incident that happened on Hampshire College campus on October 19th, um, the UMass police incident that happened this past week, and the budget forum moved to November 21st. Then we will discuss any upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules, any other topics, um, and we have our second public comment at the end, and then we will adjourn. Um, does anyone have any other questions about changing the order or does that sound okay to people? So I, I like that simply because I think we always push it to the end and, um, maybe we can get those reports out of the way. And then if we have questions, you know, we can uh, address that, but yeah, I'd like to have it at the start if possible. Anyone else? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, so can we put the minutes up on the screen? Yeah, I can do that. Give me a moment. <laughs> I've, I have notes on it, so let's see. One moment. I guess it wouldn't matter with my notes. Let's see. Share screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. So uh, unless you're going to put the, the agenda up, Jen, we need access to it. Ah. OK, can I do it? Nope. So we can't access the agenda. Ms. Pat? I'm wondering why we're waiting for the technical stuff maybe do public the first public comment uh, right um so i'm trying to work off of the two things so i can get the closed captioning okay. and i don't quite understand what's going on Demetria, uh dr shabazz sorry yeah. are you having no. problems sharing your screen or do you I not am. Have a it's problem? saying it's saying host disabled so i i like the idea miss pat if we want to go ahead to public comment while we figure out the technical part that sounds good. Um, so oh, now I have to find the reading thing again. Sorry, I apologize. Um, public comment. Uh, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. 
No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The CSSJC will not engage in dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Um, I have to go over. Uh, right now we have six attendees. If anyone would like to give public comment, please raise your hand and then we will call on you accordingly. I see Vera Cage has her hand up. Can I just press allow to talk? Does that let me do it? Let's see what happens. There you go. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, this is Vera Cage, um, president of Amherst. I want to, um, I'm not sure about uh, the presentation around the camera installation at um, one of our elementary schools, um, but I just wanted to share my initial reactions that I'm against it. Um, you know, my children, I believe um, it's going, it, the, it may be installed at, at Crocker Farm. I know there's um, a basketball court there um, and I'm not sure, you know, the, the rationale for that. Um, but I do know that, you know, in the past there have been attempts to put in um, at the high school, especially, um, security measures like a metal detector. Um, and I, I think that it's, it's, it's definitely not something I wanna see, you know, installed at schools. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Would anyone else at this point like to make public comment? We do typically have another public comment period at the end of our meeting. All right. Um, can we? So I can share now. Okay, perfect. And the uh, subtitles are working. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, we're doing things on my computer. Gosh. <laughs> What isn't on my computer? Okay. There we go. So everyone can see the agenda. I can make it a little larger. Here we are. So did we finish member reports, Allegra, or are we still in the midst of that? Um, I, th I think we were still up in call to order. So we did public comment and then we can go back up to the approval of minutes, I think. Um, and then if there are any member reports, we can do that after the minutes if we approve. Okay. Sounds good. So the first set of minutes are from September 7. So hopefully folks have had an opportunity to read the minutes. Mm -hmm. I thought this particular set um, seems very close to what was said. Which one is this? Which, what, which this, one? This is the very first set, September 7th. Okay. Uh huh. Did anyone have any uh, edits, amendments to this? set uh. understand that um and maybe jennifer and um uh pam young can correct me if i'm wrong but 
the minutes are the official record for the town. So um, it is important that it represents what we are doing as close as it can. So I do have an amendment. Okay, to the this September 7th one? Yes. Okay, where so, would I find um, Number four. Okay, let me go back. Okay, under ARPA. Um, yes. Um, it's not actually amending. It's not the one I'm looking for. Never mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this this is yeah the September seventh ones. Yeah. And I think Pamela has her hand up. Okay, I can't see it. So. <laughs> so I um asked about the minutes as far as the necessity for exact detail, and the response that I got was that um, because these meetings are being recorded, mm -hmm. the, the recordings can actually serve as the official um, record of the proceedings because everything is um, recorded. Every word is is uh, recorded. So mm -hmm. I'm, um, I think as long as the minutes um, capture the gist of what's um, being stated that they that that they and the recordings are an accurate record. Oh, okay. Thank you for the clarification. So anything for September 7th? Yeah, I was going to say thank you for this minute. Um, minute. It's really good. So Is this one, read? yeah, yeah. Clear. yeah I, I felt the same, yeah. I like it. Okay. So, so do, we do ready to vote to approve this set of minutes? So I move that we approve the, um, oh, <laughs> let me go back to September 7th, the September 7th set of minutes. Second. Okay, seconded by Ms. Pat. I can't see the, the hands, um, so I'm going to let you do that, Allegra. Okay, um, I, yes, I vote well, yes. Well, all in favor. So all in favor. We'll, we'll just do that. I'm my hand is up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right. We have approved the no the nope the September 7th minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next set. And the next set is from the August 23rd. So just a little flip there, but August 23rd set of minutes try to remember back that far but again these are all on youtube if anyone's ever interested in checking it against what is written so this is oh miss pat yeah um this is also good um just number five you know just small uh, typing errors okay. statement from number five mm -hmm. uh, up, so, up. yeah so since on. this is in um uh, a pdf oh and... never mind okay but it will be statement from not form yes exactly so okay. what I, what might be helpful and just for the future one of the yeah. things we did with the board of registrars is uh, convert these uh, to Word documents for approval. And then after they were approved, they were then in a PDF. So that would help. Uh, I don't know if this is directed towards Jen or uh, uh, Ms. Young, but that would help in case there are uh, amendments or corrections to the minutes. We could do that together. Oh, sure. Or you can just jump. I just want to jump in quickly. So if you guys state them, typically I write what you're saying down and make the correction because I have the word doc at in the office. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. So and then and then two quick one um, on the last page. Uh, the um, where it says the letter and statement read. So that is a. RE that needs to be deleted. 
Uh, the letter and the statements, right, read, were or are were read aloud. Were probably. read or something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 And then the last one is on public comment. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't complete. Does yeah. anybody remember what the public comment was that that night? Second public comment. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. So that's and people can yeah can view it on YouTube, but the sentence was incomplete. Right. Number eight. No, yes, I see that. So can we actually, you know, just, I hate to be a, a bureaucrat here, but can we actually approve these if we don't know what that is? Unless we're gonna view that now. And I don't think we have time to view that. So you can vote them with the corrections. And so if there was public po comment at that period when I go back and look at the video because I have all the recordings, then it will it will stay the public comment. Is that you were speaking about the public comment? So, right. Yes. So what yeah, what is it? So we can table these minutes for tonight and then the next meeting, if the corrections are made, we can vote to approve the correction. Them. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. So I think the second set of minutes, I'm sorry, I don't recall the date. I think it's 928 or something similar to that. I think the 97 and 928 ones, you can pass the 97 ones pass the 928 ones, you can pass with amendments. And then you can table the third, the 1016 ones. Okay, that's not what we're looking at. We're actually looking at August here. This is August 23rd. Oh, there's something wrong with that then. Yeah, those. Okay. I'll have to go back and look. So I would just disregard that for now. All right. So let's table August 20, what's labeled here, August 23rd, until that's rectified. Because yeah. okay. that might not even be the right date then. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the last set of minutes uh, is October 12th. Yeah. And um, do we have anything to add to October 12th? Okay, two, uh, I can't see who raised their hand. But. I see Miss Pat has her hand raised and I will see if I can figure out who else uh, Jennifer, Jennifer does. Okay. Miss Pat. So again, um, I want to, on this second page, what is the paragraph? Wait. Um, how do I do this? Second so page, um, the third last paragraph. All right, so under DEI department? Uh, yeah, go down. Okay. Where it stated something about the director also received criticism regarding the town purported failure to announce its involvement in an event with young, young African leaders. Uh -huh. um, that's not what I said. Okay. Um, so I would like that area be amended. I wouldn't want us to approve this minutes tonight. Um, Deborah, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I believe the... Um, prior statements. I don't know if that reflected what you said, even though our names were not mentioned, but that's when I brought up, just to remind the audience, I read from the town manager's uh, <clears throat> reports to town council regarding um, a project that our town has with another city in, in my home country, Nigeria, Abuja. And when I read it, I was actually excited. I was happy that our town is doing something like this. So at, the, at this meeting last, last month, I believe, I had mentioned that it would have been a common courtesy for the town to notify Nigerian community in Amherst. So and, can, I, can I say something, Ms. Pat, because yes. this paragraph it was It was never directed to our DEI director. Okay. Um, the town manager's report did not mention anything about event at UMass. It was the first time I heard it. Right. And the, word, the way it was written here, I, I would like it amended, basically, is what so, I'm trying to say. 
Yes, and and I agree because this is um, I had a problem with this paragraph, and partly I had a problem with the paragraph in in the sense that when you're writing minutes, you know, sometimes there are you know feelings or whatever, but we're stating the facts, and um, you know, it it seemed very much like there was um, more feeling within that paragraph and trying to condense a lot of what had happened. So I looked at the video and I wrote down uh, what transpired, um, but particularly not only your uh, comment about the, um, the event at UMass, but then, um, you know, here where it says the CSSJC then question the director on questions related to the July 5th police youth interaction, the director was criticized for not having some answers and it was suggested that the director not participate in the future town meetings regarding the issue. So when you actually listen to the video, um, that may have been the impression perhaps of whoever wrote the minutes, but uh, that is not what was said. Furthermore, the director's prior report was criticized and it was stated the report exonerated the police officers. That is probably the most factual statement in that paragraph. The director was advised to watch what she says. Again, that's kind of taken out of context within that whole conversation. And then the director received criticism regarding the town's purported failure to announce the involvement in the event. So, um, you know, I understand people's feelings, you know, however, uh, you know, may may be in this, invested in this, but for the sake of writing minutes and checking it against the record, I think it, it um, amounts to a lot more uh, feeling and passion than actually what took place. Thank you, Dee. I just want to finish my thoughts. I think you know, I brought something to our group, something good. I was excited about it because it, it involved my home country. And I felt very sad when I read this paragraph, like, wow. Um, so Miss uh, Miss Young, I was not attacking you. I did not criticize you. I made a, a comment about the town should have notified Nigerian community. I never mentioned your name uh, specifically. I did not even know UMass was involved at all. It was not stated in the manager's uh, report to the town council. And my thought was the communication director, not you. So I'll be happy, you know, when the minute is amended. So Deborah, I don't know if you have any, any thoughts. About yeah, no, I mean, uh, just to agree with what has been said by you, Ms. Pat, and as well uh, with you, Dee, um, that, that that needs to be amended because it does seem like it's just kind of like, you know, someone's kind of interpretation of what was said, because uh, I know I said some things and, and you know, and others did, but yeah, definitely, you know, not how it's stated here. So I think, yeah, we need to be very careful about how we, 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 we do this um, in the future. So th this would need to be um, amended. So, I, our, yeah. One more last, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not, I've spoken so much. I do want to thank our DEI director um, for doing the minutes. I know your plate is full, you're very busy. You know, we appreciate, you know, the extra time for putting these minutes together. It's just that this document is history. Who knows in the future who will take a look at it. And I, I just want to make sure that whatever I said anywhere publicly is recorded uh, accurately. That's the only thing, but thank you for writing the minutes. So it sounds like the minutes were as well and it sounds like they're are, am I can you hear me yeah now we can okay um it sounds like there's just a request that minutes 
kind of reflect the facts and, and perhaps not some of the feelings that come up and acknowledging that we are a passionate group and this is a topic that we all feel strongly about. So there are, there are passions that come out when we speak and, and that the minutes should reflect again what was stated. Um, and to echo what Ms. Pat said, we do appreciate all the time that goes into putting these together and, and being here and, and being the liaisons to this group. Yeah, as someone that writes minutes for an, another board <laughs> that I, I sit on, it's not pleasant, but thank goodness that we can record them by Zoom now. And um, there's, a, there's a bit more uh, support in that. Um, could I make a request to table this and I would refer um, people to the uh, recording for this October meeting. And um, I have it on, you know, the time code that uh, you would have to forward it to in order to see what that paragraph represents. Um, if anyone's interested, but certainly you're welcome, of course, to look at the whole meeting. So should we table it? Yes. yes. Okay, so what I would suggest is that we table it and the that particular paragraph uh, be rewritten to reflect um, more uh, accurately, less passionately what took place. And um, I don't know if there's help needed in doing so, but I would be willing to help if, if that's, you know, useful. If not, that's fine as well. But um, yes, I would suggest people look at the recording. Thank you, Dee. Okay. Thank you. Um. Does anybody have a member report? Are we ready to move on to member reports? So yes, um, I do have a member report and I, I shouldn't have stopped sharing. Okay. All right, so member report. So, um, I attended the Majuba that was put on by the Bridge for Unity group, which I'm a part of. It's an anti-racist dialogue group um, that was also uh, attended by the AHRA um, and quite a few people who were also working on reparations in the uh, Northampton. Um, quite a diverse group attended. Um, the Majuba was to uh, celebrate and commemorate our African ancestors to offer healing um, and then to talk about reparations. And so um, we divided up into groups after this uh, very, you know, uh, moving ceremony took place. Um, and we had a couple of questions to address and um, people talked about reparations uh, amongst uh, themselves. And then we reported back to the larger group. And we also, you know, broke bread or ate uh, uh, together. So very nice event on Sunday. And um, I, I just think we should have more of these opportunities in our community to, um, you know, not only celebrate together, but to think deeply about these issues and have these kind of one-on-one -on -one or small group conversations. I, I find them very helpful um, in getting to know uh, people in the community. Thank you, Dee. Anybody else have anything you want to report back on? All right, um, so shall we move on to the Crescent DEI updates? Great.
Want me to go first? Sure. Awesome. So I just want to uh, apologize for a misunderstanding on my end at our last meeting. Um, it wasn't appropriate for me to present like a full. Sorry, report. Earl. Um, could would we be able to stop sharing just so we can see everyone's faces? Type of thing. <laughs> Thanks. You're not missing much. I'm I'm tired. Um, so I just wanted to apologize at the last meeting. I presented a report that was inappropriate, kind of recognizing the charge of this group. And so um, I do want to present data. I'll do that in a quarterly fashion, which kind of lines up with uh, how advisory groups generally are presented information. Um, but I'm glad to kind of just talk about where we are with things. Um, so we did, we were able to fill our last position. Um, can't really speak much about the, the candidate, except to say that they do fill a really important diversity need for us, uh, as well as being a really exciting candidate. We're, we're happy Pamela, town manager, uh, for the first time a responder was involved in the hiring of a responder, which was really important for us. Um, and so this is somebody I, I believe deeply in. Um, we're putting the pieces together to train this person. Um, they will start with us uh, hopefully the 28th of this month. Um, so I'm excited for you all to meet them. Um, we're working really hard on the website, um, recognizing that it's important to have a place for people to get information and, and data as we're able to get there. Um, so you should start to see um, what days we're closed because we're nine to five with the union. Um, folks will take holidays off. Um, that'll end on that January 7th date. But because we're nine to five Monday through uh, nine, nine to five Monday through Friday, they still get those holidays off. So we will be closed on Thanksgiving and, and Christmas this year, um, with, but not next year. Um, we, we got hit by COVID. I, I got COVID. Uh, uh, we had a responder to get COVID. So that's really um, one of the challenges of such a small department is that we are uh, always going to be vulnerable to a couple absences. Um, the Kate, uh, Kate Shapiro and Kat Newman did a wonderful job keeping the department afloat while I was out, but it is just a vulnerability for folks to be aware of that um, we're now you will see responders with masks. We are being very, very careful um, and doing our absolute best. And I, I don't know that that I can avoid COVID entirely. If I figure it out, I'll, I will tell you how. Um, tabling lots of events. We were at the South Asian Festival on Saturday. It was a wonderful time. Um, really working on getting the word out to folks. So um, to that point, we were at the football game on Friday. Uh, I just want to point out the, the the our guys did get a win on Friday and uh, deserve some some love for that. They worked even if they were playing Holyoke, uh, and I'm a little a little <laughs> divided there. Um, they they played hey. really tough. Uh, we are I know we we're getting the MOU across the line right now. It looks like it'll be signed by Thanksgiving and. Um, the school board is really happy. We were able to address all of their concerns in there. And, um, you know, it's not often that an MOU process can end with everybody feeling satisfied, but this looks like a, a rare exception to that. Um, we're still doing a lot of, uh, a lot of our calls right now continue to be wellness calls. Um, a lot of them sent by folks' neighbors um, asking us to check up on somebody who's struggling. Um, we're doing a lot of housing work right now. Um, and I think that has a lot more to do with the housing market than it does uh, anything we have to do about it. But um, we're finding folks to be fairly reasonable with us um, as we're trying to work with landlords to make accommodations for folks um, so people don't end up outside in the cold. Um, we have some services coming online this month that I'm really excited about. Um, three support groups, um, alternatives to suicide, uh, hearing voices groups, and uh, a dual recovery anonymous group, which is an alternative to religious-based 12-step groups. Um, those are coming through our DPH money, which requires us to spend half of our funding on community-based providers. Um, and so we've used that to firm some things up. Um, those groups are all groups that community members have asked for. Alternatives to suicide is a space where folks who experience suicidality can speak about that experience without feeling like they will be institutionalized. Um, the hearing voices group is for folks who have the experience of hearing or seeing things that other folks don't um, to kind of have that conversation in a non-judgmental space. Um, and the dual recovery group is one that a lot of clubhouses use. Um, and for folks who aren't served well by traditional 12-step providers, it just provides another space um, through that contracting, we're bringing uh, peer bridgers into the hospitals, uh, particularly Cooley. Um, they will be supporting Amherst residents as they transition out of hospitalizations. 
um, recovery coaching through CHD uh, and the Wildflower Alliance, um, which will really allow us to have peer uh, substance use supports for folks. Um, we are working with Craig's Door to, to firm up some of their services, um, really, you know, the case management services to help with that. And we have motivational interviewing training, which is available for uh, any group that wants it. And we will have some sessions that are available to the public. Um, motivational interviewing is really our framework. And so the idea is what better way to get folks to understand what we're doing than give them the opportunity to go through the same trainings we did with the same trainers. So um, I don't know if that's a, a, a new idea, but it's one we feel really glad for. We really are proud of that training. So. I'm sure there's other things I could talk. I certainly have COVID brain, so I will do my best to answer any questions. And if I'm a little slow on the upkeep today, I hope you'll forgive me, um, but glad to take any questions. Um, I see Ms. Patton D. Ms. Patton. So Mr. Miller, I hope you are on demand. Sorry about the COVID situation. Thank you for the presentation. You know, what you stated tonight is part of CS CSWG vision, you know, um, dealing with mental health issues in our town. And I'm glad that we have some funding through DPH to do that. And being the, your area, you know, that's, you know, mental health. I have that background too. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I have a question for you. And I like to go with my instinct. I am extremely nervous about Chris going into the school system for a couple of reasons. Like, I'm curious to know um, the content of the MOU whenever it's ready to go public, but this is not something that, and I'm, you know, CS CSWG had discussed or recommended being that Chris department is social staffed in terms of resources. Um, I worry about Chris department being overextended. And I know, you know, there's never enough resources for all departments, but our public schools are entitlement services. And um, to me, Chris going into schools to me feels like resource officers. It's not something I'm comfortable with. Um, that's, you know, that's just my take. I mean, so thank you for saying that exciting stuff already. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for saying that. Cause actually that's a lot of what we were able to address. We, we do not intend to be school resource officers. We don't intend to have a permanent on-site presence. Really this is about specific situations uh, in which the school might need support that they can't already provide. Um, and those examples have looked like really parents struggling, um, the occasional transportation in the school um, and really kind of consultation with the school. Um, they're looking at service providers. Do we know somebody that we can help with? Um, we've been working with the school since I got into town. Uh, my understanding from the LEAP report from the CSWG work was that trauma-informed was kind of a core piece of this. Um, and all of the best evidence says that if you want to kind of limit the amount of adverse childhood experiences folks have, um, which are a lot of those big health indicators that you need to provide those services as early as possible. Um, I kind of think of this MOU as the Dracula rule. We only show up when, when we're invited in uh, for that specific situation. Um, the MOU is very clear that we are not there to surveil. We do not have the technology nor an interest, um, that parents must be notified when we're involved in a situation, and that we are consensual even to the student. So um, we only work with folks who are interested. Um, I think the reality is we were going to end up working with the school, whether it was uh, through this kind of direct line of communication or the fragmented way of running across youth in the community and not having a formalized way of, of dealing with it. Um, and the big reason for the MOU was to address some concerns from, from folks on the school board, which I think mirror a lot of yours. Um, you know, this town does not want police at the school. Um, we don't intend to be them. But a good example is the arson at the school. Um, the fire chief requested us. 
Um, and thankfully, we were able to just do this in the moment with the superintendent there. But um, this does allow us to formally respond when there's something. Uh, an example, the Talib uh, invited uh, Principal Sadiq invited us to come to the football game on Friday, and and that was because of some you know some some challenges. Those challenges didn't arise. I mostly just ate chili and watched a football game. Uh, but if they had, we would have been there. So. I, I think this is one of those things. I, the MOU will certainly be available. Um, we're hoping before Thanksgiving. Um, and I think it's one of those things. I don't know that I'll be able to, to assure everyone on that, but I do encourage folks to watch us do the work. And, and if you're concerned, like just keep observing. And if there's something we need to correct, we will. But we don't, in, we don't expect this to be a large amount of time. And the MOU is clear. We do prioritize public safety and our, our main mission goals. This is when we have capacity to be supportive that we will. Thank you. Doesn't this school have family center? Oh, well, they have lots of folks, and actually, uh, we're providing some of the MI, uh, MI training to the folks at the school um, to help you know make them better too. So yeah, there's a lot of folks at the school, and we don't intend to take their job either. I mean, family center is that does that still exist? Because what I'm here, okay. Let me just I'll let it go. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't yeah. know anything about the schools. I just know when they call me in. That's uh. I, I know there's a family resource center. I met with those folks in the spring. I don't have any sense of what their day-to-day -day operations look like. Thank you. Um, D. Yes, thank you, Earl. So one of the questions that came up uh, actually before you mentioned uh, Craig's doors was how Cress or is Cress working with these other social services is within Amherst, such as the um, Amherst Community Connections, with which also finds short-term housing, and um, you know Craig's doors. Similarly, um, they they you know look at the unhoused and and folks. But how is Crest formally working with these different agencies? So that's one question. The other question I have, and this has to do with kind of uh, sustainability and, and looking at this long term. Um, you're saying that Crest won't be available for holidays, at least this year, and understandably, um, you'll ramp up hopefully for next year. Um, but you know, when it comes to um, Cress being available during these these breaks where, you know, folks usually need kind of uh, mental health services during holidays, during these particular times, what is the plan for Cress to ramp up to uh, that capacity uh, to be able to take, you know, to, to look at holiday time and, and that type of thing. And then lastly, and this is something just to put in the back because um, I, I would like, a, I'm sure y'all are collecting data, but I would like to see that data um, available at some point. So we're aware as a CSSJC, um, what needs to happen to advocate for Cress in terms of services that are needed, you know, or equipment that is needed, or what have you. And this data, um, having us, you know, be aware of that data uh, would be helpful in formulating such arguments, particularly during budgeting periods. Well, I may take those in reverse order, and I may forget that first one. So if I forget one, please chime in for me. Um, the last one, we are thinking about that a lot right now. Um, we are currently in talks with a well a well, a well uh, uh, institution with a good reputation for data stuff um, to work with us. We're working with a class at UMass that's doing some data evaluation. Um, as soon as possible, um, we would like to have our data available to folks in as close to real time as possible on the town website. Uh, if folks want a preview of what that's going to look like, I do invite you to look at the Durham, North Carolina website. Um, we are looking very closely at them. We're in some conversation with them. We're going to get some folks out to them soon. Um, their data is 24 hours accurate. So it dumps every night. You can see what it looks like. Um, and one of the pieces they collect that I'm really excited about is actually how safe did the responders feel? Um, 
So uh, we, we are hoping to get that on the town website ASAP. The deadline um, is within a year of our start, we need to report out to everyone. So um, we will have a, a very robust uh, annual uh, kind of data collection, but uh, I don't want folks to think that's going to stop us from sharing it as, as freely as we can. We're, we're really proud of it. And we also know that everybody just needs to know whether this works or not. Um, Excuse me. So the second piece about holidays, that one is is the easiest. Um, after January seventh, we will work three hundred and sixty five days a year. So we will be staffed up on holidays, uh, vacations every day. So this is just kind of the last little bit of this before we're past that. Um, so any holidays after January seventh, we will be staffed. We will be working, um, and we work with folks on that. And and we expect to be doing our regular hours unless there's a reason for us not to. Um, so that would be 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. At, for, for now. Um, I, I lost the first one. I'm so sorry. I thought I was going to get there. Yeah, that's okay. You did good. So, and I, I got COVID the last week of uh, spring semester. And I won't say, you know, my students gave it to me, but, you know, it's just, it was going around. It was a UMass. So anyway, um, COVID on the brain is is real. Uh, the, the first question, now the last question, has to do with um, how is Cress working with agencies oh. within the town, these these yeah. other social service agencies, and, and namely, uh, when you mentioned uh, uh, housing, uh, Amherst Community Con Connections comes to mind. Yeah, so we had a meeting, we have a social service meeting that happens the first Wednesday of every month. Um, today, it was in the conference room in town hall on the first floor, and we had, I think, 29 people at that meeting. Um, I don't know if Amherst Connection is invited currently. I will make sure they are, are for the next one. We would like everybody to be able to come there. Those meetings are really, um, right now, we're thinking about just making sure that we have practices that line up with folks, um, and that when there are opportunities that we can all work together, we're, we're really aggressively writing grants at this point. Um, and a lot of those involve other folks. I would say um, one of the things I'm really excited about is uh, Kay Shapiro won her first grant, which allowed us to join this Council of Government Learning Community. Um, and in that group, we actually have Cooley Dickinson Hospital, CSO, Holyoke Hospital, um, and some other uh, local community organizations who are actually a part of that learning community with us um, and are helping us to form those things. Uh, there, anybody who wants to be a part of that, we would like to have them. Um, I think some of it is just us, you know, trying to start things quickly and, and maybe not catching everyone. Um, if folks have an idea of people they think we should invite, we will. Um, and so we we want to collaborate. We're doing our best to. Um, that's another one of those people limitation things. We kind of have to say, all right, we're going to work with these 10 folks right now, get that relationship up and then move to the next folks. Um, there are some folks we haven't got to, but I think I think we've caught, we've got most of the state agencies, most of the regional agencies. And so we'll make sure we get everybody else. Um, but yeah, and we're also looking to create a individual provider meeting at some point. So for private practice clinicians who aren't a part of a large collective, uh, but are still doing work in our community to have a touch point with us. So uh, I think the answer to your question is, I'm not sure if they're invited yet, but they absolutely will be after this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah. Yep. Uh, thank you, Earl, um, for, uh, you know, answering all those questions and the report. And I'm glad to hear that, you know, the data is going to be forthcoming. Um, I think in the meantime, you know, it probably, and I think you already know this, right, to, to just have some data when you do present to us uh, would be helpful so that then it can, you know, be shared with the community. But I'm glad that that's something that's, you know, that you're focused on because that's really important in terms of what we're doing and really to, you know, as you know, to, to get you more funding uh, for CRESS. Um, the other thing too, and I know you had talked about it before, but just again, it's going to be kind of one of those things that I'll continue to focus on, which is making sure that CRESS uh, continues to amp, amp up so that you all can respond to noise complaints, <clears throat> noise complaints and any other um you know, any other incidents that are non, you know, violent, right? Because we want to make sure that you all are the ones that are responding. And so I think that's why sometimes we get a little bit like um, apprehensive, right? Like in terms of you all going into the schools or what have you, because when we were with CSWG, we were more so kind of focusing on anything that was non violent, which is more so around like those noise complaints, which is very important, which we've seen, right? In terms of that July 5th incident, um, how key 
you know, it will be for you all to, to, to really take over anything that's nonviolent, you know, here within, within um, Amherst, because, you know, APD is not prepared to deal with any of those things, you know? So we don't want you all to be spread thin, you know what I'm saying? And not really kind of deal with the things that really we envisioned you all dealing with, which is because, you know, everyone's going to want, everyone's going to, you know, want you to do everything. Um, however, we want you all to stay as closely kind of focused to, 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 to that vision. And that vision includes like, you know, some of these major issues like noise complaints, which I know you said you all can't do as of yet. And you have a plan in the future, but that's why it's kind of like, so you got to be careful about not being pushed into other areas um, that possibly like the schools where they have other resources and things like that. You know, every once in a while, yeah, you all can help, but just be careful, you know, so that you can you and your team can focus on some of these other bigger issues where APD is gonna be called in on a regular basis, okay? Yeah, so just to clarify, we have already responded to things that would have been noise complaints. Uh, my folks have done that. Uh, I think if you find yourself downtown, you will find us with some noisy folks every once in a while. Um, the reality of the noise complaint thing is on my end of things, we are, we're ready to take any call that, that we're sent on. I, you know, I, I don't, I want to make sure that I, uh, that I balance out the reality of us existing in a larger system with the fact that my folks are roaring to go. Um, you know, this, the, this last piece is really to make sure we get the dispatch system on board. Um, we're, we'll be ready to take whatever noise complaints are sent to us by dispatch. Uh, I just, I think the conversation for us to be have will be that the number of people we can address will be limited just by our size. Um, I think, you know, if there's more than 20 people, the odds that Crest is going to be uh, dispatched is just going to be low, no matter what. But people being uh, loud downtown, we've already taken those calls. We've handled them well, um, my, you know. I, you know, I don't want to say my, my, my folks are, are aware of the challenges, but they're not afraid of the work. We're not afraid of doing it. And, and we're, you know, we're ready. And the schools won't spread us thin. The schools are, schools are fun. Most of it is just, you know, uh, spending time with the folks over there. And, you know, I want to be honest, that does make us better. You know, we're able to, to work with experienced folks who know the community, who can help us uh, understand things better. An example of like things that weren't in the CSWG report, but are things we did are yesterday, if you voted in the town of Amherst, you did not run into an armed officer. You ran into crest responders. We were at almost every polling site all day. Um, those are things that weren't in the report, but I understand to be the spirit of the report the spirit of it to be, to take things on that we can. And so I just want you all to know that any opportunity there is for us to step up, we are taking, we have taken, and we will continue to take. Um, and and I also, I hear what you're saying and I will, I will remember that. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously I know that you all are gonna go beyond it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it was more so in terms of like, just, you know, addressing some of the stuff that we at least included it. But of course, you're all going to go, it's going to morph, right? It's going to change. Yeah. You're going to have even new things that we never thought about, you know? Uh, but it's just in terms of like, you know, at least addressing some of, some of those things. And even when you say like, okay, well, if there's like a noise complaint with 20 people or what have you, maybe you all can have some hybrid models for the time being though, right? Yeah. Where you all go with the APD. I, I, I just will be very nervous about just having the APD show up on, on their own. You know what I'm saying? Even if there's 20, 30, 40. So I want you all to kind of think about those things. Cause again, it's about you all being there. That's the vision. The vision is for you all to respond to it um, and not to have APD respond to it on their own. Because as we've seen, you know, just with the July 5th incident, yeah. they're not capable of doing that in the way that, that that should that, that we envision it being done. So, you know, so again, and I'm sure you're thinking about these things, but you know, obviously we're here to help and support that and kind of support, you know, in terms of that thinking process and making sure that that it, it goes down this path, you know, where you all are kind of doing a lot of these things because it's it's very needed. And and the de-escalation option is is what we're looking for as opposed to escalating and it ending in in, in really bad situations. Uh, I think, you know, part of this is, is that, you know, like we're all going to learn things through this that we couldn't have envisioned, like public safety looking different looks different. And I think that's something that we're, we'll need to think about as a town. Our approach is not fast. 
our approach cannot be fast. I, I haven't found a way for us to, without force, calm people down without really kind of taking the time to hear them, to hear what they're concerned about. And so, you know, that's the feedback I've heard from folks is, well, Crest shows up and maybe they take 45 minutes. And that's just something I think as we grow, well, folks will really need to understand. I, I don't intend for us to get faster if it costs us any of our compassion or any of our ability to really trust people. And that's something I think as we take, as we get to that place of taking noise complaints that we'll really need your support and getting neighbors to understand is the not forced way is the slow way. And I, I think it's the right way. Uh, I took the job because I think it's the right way. But it is it does mean a little bit more tolerance in the community for folks who are being disruptive or being experienced as disruptive. Because um, that's that's the thing we're hearing is like, well, you showed up and the person was still mad for 10 minutes. Like, yeah, well, they, their feelings were were real. And so we didn't just kind of make them stop feeling them. And so I just, there's gonna be bits of this that we will need really help with the messaging um, and having those conversations. And, you know, I need to talk to the town manager. I, I know you guys, everybody had a forum last year, kind of in January. I'd like to have us do another one of those and another kind of community forum where folks can come together. And, you know, we can talk through some of these ideas. We have lots of big policy things on the table and I'd love to get folks together and, and see how it comes out in the wash. I appreciate you guys thinking so much about us and, you know, I intend as much as possible to be out in front of you. I, I think the next time I'll have data for you, that'll be meaningful, will likely be January, just because we're still very much in this ramping up. And so my hope is to be able to talk numbers when we're concluding this phase so that we can kind of clear the slate and start looking at what the full deployment numbers look like. Thank you, Earl. D, I see you have your hand up again. So what I would request, and we can request it maybe down the line, is that even if it's a preliminary report for the community and whether it's <laughs> whether it's given in a forum, but uh, a report that visually uh, people in the community can understand the numbers and the capacity, um, that would be really helpful. So not just you know for CSSJC, but maybe the the community uh, would would be able to be a part of that to understand how has um, how has Cress changed um, you know res response here in Amherst um, and really see some kind of meaningful figures you know although again we're talking about at that point what nine months. Um, but, you know, some type of report like that, and, and again, we'd know it would be kind of preliminary, but uh, something visual for the community to, to understand and appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I just, I, I just want to give the group some kudos, right, because there, there hasn't been much time to say what's gone well. Um, we are the fastest department from the start to deployment in the country. Um, we deployed after uh, September's nine months, uh, nine and a half months from the town council making the declaration. Um, and you can see from other communities around us, it isn't that easy to get here. Um, we're fully staffed, which most departments, you know, struggle with. You know, that first month reports 270 calls. I think you're going to see those numbers really reflected in our month to month work. That's about where we're at right now. Um, and that's a testament to other departments collaborating with us and being willing to let us take on some work. And, you know, right now we very much are a, a hungry department for work. And to Deb's point, I, I imagine there's going to come a day where I'm less hungry for work and I'm less chasing it. Um, but right now, you know, the folks we have are fantastic. Um, the town should be very, very proud of them. I'm very, very proud of them every day. Um, we're not perfect. Um, but we weren't aiming for that either way. So I just, you know, I know there's so there's a lot of challenges, but whatever we got here is is really something magic. And I'm I'm lucky enough to be the person in this seat, but I, I think it wouldn't have been hard with the folks I got to to make this thing move. Um, we are we are doing some really, you know, I we did the trunk or treat at the UMass uh, off campus family housing. And uh, and I watched, we had a mother come up and if you see our uniforms, our pronouns are on them. And that's something that, you know, isn't historically like a public safety thing. And we, we've had multiple parents like visibly like touched by that. And so those little things that I know were important to everyone here that we're putting into play um, are turning out to mean a lot to people in town. And so, you know, we're hearing from folks that 
that they're glad we're here. And that's really the first step, right? The first step is that they're glad we're here. Next step is figuring out how to serve them and then, you know, how to do it every day for as long as we can. You but know, I just, Earl, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I think once we look at this historically, yes, it, it the credit will go to you as the first director and hiring the right people. But CSWG, I have to tell you, laid that groundwork to, um, you know, set it up where right. you were able to come in and uh, deliver. But again, it's about hiring the right person and getting the right people for the job. So I do appreciate that. But someone that does cultural, social, you know, history in that way, we must <laughs> remember the struggle because it was a struggle to get the town council and the community to agree to this. And thank goodness that they had the wherewithal and the and the moment of clarity to say yes. And it has paid off. So I so appreciate yeah. I hope you all heard that. That's what I meant though. No, is you didn't even have that to that say came, that. The this fact that that me. work came out of here is like, <laughs> you know, when, when communities come to us and ask how they do this, the first thing we do is send them to the CSWG info. Uh, right. I think that process was it, clearly not the most fun all the time, painful in a, a lot of ways, but really important. Um, and for me, like the fact that I came in and didn't have to do that work, that there was already clarity in the vision, that there was already a sense of it, uh, has ultimately made this work doable. And, you know, the first thing when someone comes to work with us or intern with us or spend meaningful time with us, we have them do is read the LEAP report, look at the CSWG final report. Like we have them examine everything in that page because we recognize that it's it's part of our DNA. Uh, we hold that that really dearly. So, um, I appreciate so I just, it. yeah, I appreciate you all. All right. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Can, can I, I really ask a so question cool. really quick? Yeah. Two yeah, questions, two actually. One, just um. The first one was about, so you mentioned dispatch equipment still not being fully up to speed or our or calls coming, where are calls coming from? That's the easiest way to put the, the question. And then the second question is, if you can share what are your budgetary requests or what do you see as like your ideal staffing pattern at this time knowing that in two weeks there's a budget forum for the town yeah so the first question is our dispatch equipment is here um it's going to take us right now we're in the midst of training on it so it's not just the radios we have which are actually really good they're on the cellular network not that I, I won't get too in the weeds it is very boring but it allows us to have much better coverage throughout town um, while mimicking all of the features of a radio system. There's actually a console that sits in dispatch now. So they're really training on that to make sure when our calls come in, they can incorporate them. Um, we're we're probably we're probably right on track. We have 30 business days. We think about that a lot. 30 business days till the seventh. Um, to have that in the next three or four weeks to have folks trained up to a good a good level. Um, and our folks are gonna shadow with the fire department. Our system looks closer to the fire department than police. So spending that time with them will allow them to see how they use this stuff in the field, um, how they kind of carry themselves. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and I just got my budget worksheet like three days ago. So I don't have a much of an ask, but what I would say is I don't think it's any secret that we need some help superv supervising and, uh, you know, that's that's a pretty clear need. Um, we're going to work through that worksheet. I know it's due beginning of December. We'll get it back in. And um, but, you know, I, we're small and, and I don't you know, I think the for everyone, the way is yeah, I think low and slow has worked for us. I think we've seen other communities that have started out really big and struggled. Um, so, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking about growth as not just in terms of what do we need next year, but what do we need in five years? And what is the thing that is beneficial to hold off until we have some experience? Um, so I, you know, I, there are obviously systemic limitations, but there's also the limitation of, you know, we, there isn't, there isn't a school you can go to, to be a community responder. There isn't a place you can go. And so that's really being defined every day by these folks. And, you know, I worry about growing so big that we dilute that kind of um, 
the integrity of our process, the kind of thoughtfulness of our process. So I don't have an answer to that. Again, these are all questions for the community to answer and ultimately the town council. But um, you know, I think it's it's important that there be a dialogue about what does that ramping up look like and and do we lose some of the the values that have been baked into this if we just start to expand for the sake of expanding. So I, I think there's arguments on both sides. I will let the community, you guys are much better equipped for that. I live in Agawam. Um and and but yeah, I think there's pros and cons, but the supervisors are are something I would hope for. Um that's tricky. So sorry if that was a, I, I, I try not to give too, too opaque of an answer, but that's the best I can do with two days of the budget worksheet. Thank you. Anybody else have any further questions about Cress? Ms. Pat. It's not a question, it's just to thank Mr. Miller. I like your approach of community engagement. In that way, the community is getting to know Cress, the word is getting out. So continue doing what you're doing. And also remember that one of the primary purposes is also to deal with noise complaint. We can't say that enough. That, you know, we're not saying crest responders should just go alone. Sometimes if it's a large group, it's fine to go with police officers, but it makes a huge difference to have civilian present. So it's all yeah. juggling acts. Thank we're, you so much. You know, I, I appreciate that so much. We are in uh, Minneapolis is the community that has really taken this on in its work. So we're doing, we have some meetings with them to look at what's worked for them, what approaches have been meaningful. So this is one of the benefits of us being a part of this larger conversation is that we're able to really learn from our peers. So, um, you know, however we get there, ultimately we will get there. It's just a matter of how soon, but I, I'm committed to doing, uh, to being a public safety department and noise complaints are a part of public safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. DEI? Right. So uh, in no particular order, um, uh, Jen and I met with uh, Dina Levy, the director of the Workforce Equity and Inclusion Department at uh, Amherst College today. Um, we both participated in a disability uh, access, um, or actually, the, uh, it's a, let me get this, get the name straight. So it is the Mass Office on Disability, and they had a two-day training on community access monitoring. So um, we are, I guess, both certified to review buildings and other locations to see if they comply with ADA requirements. Um, in addition to that, uh, I met with the Disability Access Commission, um, uh, which is one of the town boards, um, regarding the interaction of our office and the work that they are going on. There's a core equity group, and I don't, um, I don't know if you all are familiar, but uh, Jen and I believe five other town staff formed a core equity group, which was based on the GARE model. GARE is the Government Alliance for Racial Equity, and they have an established programs for how mun municipalities can engage in DEI work. So there has been a core equity group in the town that's met for the last, um, I believe, close to two years now. Um, that group has agreed to serve as subject matter experts for the DEI department's self-assessment uh, tool. So we have completed a self-assessment tool. It's awaiting approval by the town manager that will be sent out to um, all of the departments um, to conduct their self-assessment. And um, the core equity group has agreed to serve um, as subject matter experts. So if department heads have a question and they don't want to have to ask the question of the principal, um, you know, or come to the DEI office, then they can um, ask other subject matter, um, you know, experts in town to assist them in completing the form. And that's the first step in having each department create their own DEI strategic plan. Uh, like uh, Earl, I have um, started 
to meet with uh, Sean about um, the uh, budgeting process for the office. And um, I know that you have that later on your agenda. So I will, um, I'll just say that I think the biz biggest ask for DEI will be for funding for a consultant to work on the resident oversight board. Um, and that's that, that's probably the primary ask. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I met, we got the forms as Earl said a couple of days ago. I met with uh, Sean yesterday just to make sure that I um, am familiar with the processes for Amherst and um, actually had a really wonderful training today through the Northeast Government Executive Council on municipal financing. And both Jen and I attended, that was really good. Um, we have completed the HR director search. You probably saw maybe the announcement of the HR director. I think she's gonna be a great um, addition to the town. I actually chaired the search committee, um, but um, included on the search committee was um, Sean, um, um, uh, someone from the personnel board, um, Amy Ruzecki from uh, DPW and, oh, and Gabe Team. So I think those, that was, and, um, and Angela Mills. So those were the core members of that search committee. Um, um, the HRC has added uh, two new people to their commission. They have yet to be sworn in, but the, um, they, um, I think they're both gonna be good additions and we have a third person who will be interviewed in two weeks. So that would bring that board up to uh, capacity, which will be great. Um, uh, the DUI strategic plan for our own department plan and um, a plan for rolling up the other departments into a, a town plan. Uh, is basically under review. Jen and I spent a lot of time working on it, went back and forth, a lot of editing. We are seeking some additional edits, um, but that is moving along um, quite nicely. And I have started drafting just the beginnings of what might be a fact sheet for the resident oversight board. Um, Oh, and uh, so Sean also um, uh, invited Jen and I, but we had a conflict to participate in a um, Commonwealth training on um, diversifying the procurement process. Uh, so Jen and I were not able to attend, but Sean did attend. And then we met with him separately to review um, the information that he um, gained from that training and one of the outcomes may be um, seeking for the town to sponsor probably regionally a, um, a, a workshop and training so that we can encourage more um, uh, BIPOC and um, veterans and women owned businesses to be registered in the state um, supplier diversity uh, diversity database. There are lots of uh, businesses in the database, but very few of them, uh, relatively speaking, in, in Western and Central Mass. So it makes it difficult to use the state procurement process for, uh, to, you know, to identify those people. So we're, we're thinking that there might be a possibility of, um, of having some sort of uh, workshop to get people signed up for the procurement process. And that actually was also part of the discussion that we had with the workforce development director at, uh, at Amherst College, because they are really um, trying to put in some effort into identifying um, BIPOC women-owned um, uh, businesses as well so that they can have that as part of their um, plan to engage the community. Um, and I do believe that that's pretty much uh, it. I will be sitting on another search committee um, for the comptroller's um, position, but um, that has not started yet. Sorry, I couldn't unmute um, D. 
So thank you, Pam. It sounds like uh, you and Jen have been uh, fairly busy um, on a variety of things. I have a question about the latter part of your report about the uh, procurement workshop. I think that's a great idea as a um, Black woman-owned business uh, owner myself. I've been to a couple of those. And um, it, you're right, for Western Mass, it's uh, few to none in terms of these types of uh, workshops and um, promotional um, meetings. And my concern is that what I've seen listed for BIPOC and women own businesses in this town, it relies on a list from the chamber, which is extremely limited. Um, I know several uh, particularly black owned businesses and business owners, and they're not even listed on the chamber. So I would encourage, and it sounds like you're going to maybe not even, you didn't reference them, but I really encourage um, you and um, others who are putting together such a workshop, which again, I think is a, a positive, to move beyond this reliance on our chamber that historically has not represented you know, and I'm not saying they're bad people, but simply historically have not represented BIPOC business owners and services in this community. And so um, when you put that together, um, you know, I'd be very interested in, uh, I guess, how that is to be organized again, my, my own personal interest, but to benefit the community in terms of diversity and equity um you know who you're going to send the the announcement out to that type of thing how it gets distributed that you know uh let us help you this is what we're here for the cssjc uh miss pat certainly is a business owner uh several times over um and i'm sure there are others um you know i i know represented in this group who have family members who are entrepreneurs and business owners so um we're, we're a resource. So thank you. So I, um, I don't know if Jen is still listening in, but that was also a concern that was raised today in the conversation that we had at, at Amherst College. And um, so I, I I'm, have only met with uh, once have had one meeting with the chamber and one meeting with the bid, but I, from the conversation that um, I've had with Jennifer and uh, and she would really have to verify this. It's my understanding that the chambers list is not complete because membership in the chamber is required and that sometimes presents an obstacle for um, you know for new and um, emerging businesses. So that was part of the discussion today and I think you know it would be, uh, perhaps a discussion that we might be able to have um, with the group. I see Jennifer has raised her hand, so uh, I will. She certainly has much more knowledge because she's on one of one, if not both, of the um, diversity boards. I think for so I, I'll let her finish the thought and and provide more information. Okay, sorry, had to unmute. Um, so yes, the the chamber is the, the equity task force on the chamber has been working on how we can be more inclusive to the other businesses. Whether it's that people, um, you know, there's other businesses that have larger incomes and they can sponsor some of the other. If it's a price that they're looking for for the chamber, help to sponsor the other businesses um, in a way that doesn't insult anyone right like it's just it's very easy to be done and then one of the concerns was that the list of businesses and where do we find other businesses right so um I know even for Juneteenth I've, I've you there's a 
black associations business list that I have used to, to find different businesses and vendors for different events. And so um, we really just have to get out into the different towns because this will be regional, right? So that's gonna, I'm assuming that it's gonna include Springfield, it's gonna include Amherst, it's gonna include Northampton and Hadley and, and really get out and, and see the different businesses, right? Cause it just can't be, and then for anybody who knows them as well. So that would, I don't, Miss Pat, I don't think that you're on the list and D, I think seventh gen is on the list. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I thought I saw it on there. So well, that is I didn't pay for it. So somebody must have done me a solid and put me on the list, but that's cool too. Um, so we, you know, I think that's part of it is really getting out and, you know, above and beyond what has been done in the past to, to recruit and to um, bring people in, right? So I think that the, the workforce will be a good, um, the workshop will be good. That's a, it's a good thing, right? We just have to make sure that we are reaching as many people as we can in a very inclusive way. Thank you, Ms. Pat. So this is my favorite subject of <laughs> business. First of all, I wanna thank um, Ms. Young and Ms. Moisten for all your time, what you've been doing. And um, just to, in addition to what Dr. D said, I agree with everything. As a former member of, of Chambers, I think it's beyond membership fees. It's all about how the Chambers and bid system is created. If you're a person of color, you can never be comfortable or quote unquote fit in. In fact, as a result of that, we actually have Black Business Association uh, of Pioneer Valley. And our group meets at uh, a hairdresser saloon once every month on Saturdays. We have an association. We have tried the town to, you know, to put listings of bipoc on businesses that has not happened. I remember when I used to run restaurant, people who came, some people who came to my restaurant would tell me that they found my restaurant name from MS College listings of people of color uh, that own businesses. So there is a problem of rel over-reliance on Chamber of Commerce. I don't want to repeat what Dr. D said, but I think, um, it's time to form a BIPOC business group that will work with the AI department regionally, not just Amherst, maybe Hampshire County or beyond, up to Springfield and Holyoke. This is what the Black owned businesses were trying to accomplish within us. Um, but you know, we all get too busy and we get overextended. So this would be really opportunity to get BIPOC folks together. You know, we're here, it depends on, you know, where people are looking. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Philip? No, I, I think that this is a great idea and a uh, real need. I just wanna uh, be, or just add in that um, if there's any efforts for non-English speakers um, for business owners, um, the Latinx community, as well as any Asian community and so on, just to make sure that that reach is being explored as well, because sometimes an English speaker will come and put a flyer up, do whatever, and a business doesn't inherently mean that the understanding is there as to what is trying to be done. So I just wanna put that on the radar. Absolutely. And you know, in Boston, there are different uh, BIPOC business groups and BECMA is one of the, the largest and it's supposed to be Massachusetts wide, B-E-C-M-A. 
um, but it doesn't really have a foothold here. So it's been more, you know, localized, as Ms. Pat says, in terms of organization. I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm actually a member of Be Becca, actually. I am. Yeah, me too. I'm I am a member, yeah. And it, yeah, it doesn't we need really... local. We need yeah. local. We need local right here. Right. And we, we already have a group, but we need to expand it beyond Black own business association, we need to expand it to BIPOC. And we, we would like to work with our town. And this is what DEI is all about. Absolutely. Can I just jump in? Because I had my hand, it just stayed up. And so I didn't yes. know if you knew yes, that yes. I No, to please. Yeah. I just wanted to comment on what Philip said. And, you know, that is something language barriers, or I don't even want to call them a barrier because they're not necessarily a barrier for everyone. But, <clears throat> um, you know, being inclusive isn't just limited to, to the BIPOC community in the sense of having people who, and I, maybe I speak too general, um, of different races. It is inclusive of everything. So that does include those. And, and um, I know I've spoken with Claudia about it several times about how to reach out to community members. She said, you know, that to business owners who she doesn't already have a relationship with and, you know, how does she engage? And so we've talked about those things and, and we're working on those as well. And um, I was on that website today, Ms. Pat and Ms. Okay. Uh, Dr. Shabazz of the BMAC, if that's what you said it was. Um, I actually saw that today. And so I, I do think that there should be some type of organization that helps, you know, it's good support for the businesses. People can relate to each other and validate each other and um, help each other grow. So, uh, you know, I think that you know, Pamela and I and, and CSSJC and, and the other institution, the college institutions and the businesses can all make that happen. Thank you. I'm getting yeah. excited. Yeah. Chamber of Commerce is white business owner thing. I don't see myself feeling fitted in at all. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. No, with, I'm, I'm with you. I, I never paid dues and I don't see myself represented. No. So if, if we could have something better, um, and as Philip uh, indicates uh, with, you know, language diversity, uh, all sorts of, uh, you know, um, diversity and supports. So people who are entrepreneurs who want to create businesses uh, in this community, that they have the support in which to do so. So I'm excited about that. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Jen. Um, I wanted to follow up on, um, you said you went to a disability workshop. Um, that is a major concern uh, for me, both personally uh, in this community, but also just uh, the community in general. Um, how this, how the, the environment of Amherst is not necessarily uh, for physical disabilities um, accessible oftentimes. And um, our transportation system, you know, I have personally given rides to people with disabilities who've been waiting at stop and shop you know, for the bus to come and get them. And it takes, it's gonna be another two hours, you know? And so I take them with their groceries home. I don't even know them, but I mean, it's it's a, a type of situation that is sometimes desperate, particularly when our busing system is, is not working, you know, uh, beyond the school semesters. And that's that's when folks really need rides. So I don't know, what the plans are, Pam, in terms of assessing. Um, I know they did do one based on senior citizens and dementia in the community, but I don't know if there's been a survey um, regarding uh, physical uh, disabilities and, and the environment of Amherst. So the, uh, the training that we did was actually um, like, so pretty much two full days from nine to uh, 2 30 and it was online but um, given by the mass office on disability and the process um, is to train the individual participants to be sort of civilian um, like a civilian task force to be able to go and assist 
uh, buildings um, or you know land property owners to see if their buildings are accessible um, and also to be a, or like a reporting agent if you see something that it doesn't meet uh, the, the ADA compliance. So I think that was very helpful just um, to have that information. The town itself has done, a, I would say, a very comprehensive ADA report, which is available on the Disability um, Access um, Commission website, on their website. And uh, when I say comprehensive, I, 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 I think it's hundreds of pages, but it what basically what it did was review all of the physical facilities in town to see whether they met the um, federal and state requirements. And there are different requirements between the federal and state requirements. And in some areas, the federal requirements are more re, um, comprehensive and in others, the states are more comprehensive. And then it, it um, prioritize those within the city. So, I mean, I'm sure you all know that um, any new buildings have to meet the standards. And generally, if you are, um, you know, uh, making any sort of a change to an older building, then it has to be brought up to the current standards. Uh, but beyond that, you know, cities and towns and businesses have to sort of make a, make a decision about the prioritizing um, which of the various multiple, um, you know, non what would be in non-compliance with current standards they address. So I, uh, uh, so I know that for the town there is definitely a very comprehensive plan in place and and a, and um, a set of priorities of which ones they would address first. With the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, I am not sure what the governance structure would be because it's not like there is a county government um so i'm not really sure how uh, who would be the legal uh, authority for that but transportation was raised um at the meeting of the daac that i attended um and and to your point that um uh, in general just attending any sort of a town function or event uh, it's quite difficult to arrange transportation where you're not waiting for hours for a van to come and get you. And there were particular questions raised about um, uh, about uh, different events that are sponsored by the town. So um, I uh, I would be happy to to send you the link to the website of the town's list of priorities. Um, and I don't know. Um, oh, who the legal authority would be for a PBTA, but I can check into that. Yeah, please, please do. Cause it's something that for a long time has um, really concerned me and, and my friends who have physical disabilities and, and trying to get around and participate in, in this community. So thank you. Any other questions? Oh, there we go, Ms. Pat. Yeah, so I'm actually glad that um, Ms. Young um, raised the disability commission that we have in this town. And I'm very familiar with the work that they do and they don't get enough recognition, but I'm so glad we have a committee like that. I know one of the charge that they do is they recognize um, businesses that is accessible with people with disability. And I remember one year, one of my dentists, and my dentist actually got recognized um because she will you know um service um client um patients with you know with disability in her practice so i just want to publicly thank that commission they do good work a lot of good work happening in our town that goes unnoticed thank you for raising that tonight miss young sure yeah i um i had my first meeting with them on i believe tuesday and um, uh, members of the commission have volunteered to work with the DEI department and to do some in-house training around some of the issues that are Im really important. So we will be following up with them around that, yeah. Plus that's the work I do. I work with people with disability, elderly, Alzheimer's. So I'm in that community anyways. So good job. Okay, thank you. 
So I'm just trying to be aware of time. I know that we wanted to get to the school issue, which I think is important, um, but we also want an update on uh, what is going on uh, in terms of July 5th. So if that's okay, I'd like for us to move to the discussion about cameras in the school. Um, is that all right with everyone? Yes. Okay, let's make sure we're on point here. Yeah, so it was the proposal uh, for have cameras at uh, the new elementary school um, raised by one of our school committee members. What's our position on that? Can I just read um, the part of the email that she sent me and I apologize Please. for Possibly no, please, not getting that. Yeah, yeah, and actually, that's that's what I was going to say. Whatever background you all have on this, please share. Yeah. Um, so I received and de received an email from Jennifer Shaw saying, um, "I'm contacting you as co-chairs of Community Safety and Social Justice Committee to ask if CSSJC would discuss and weigh in on the topic of security cameras at the new Amherst Elementary School." The planning and design of the school, which will be sited at the current Fort River site and will serve 575 students. Grades K through five is happening now. The building is scheduled to be completed and open to students by 2026. The Amherst School Committee discussed this matter at our October 18th meeting with most members generally being in favor of the idea. The plan would be to have security cameras outside of the building as well as inside at entrances, exits, hallways, and stairwells. There would be no cameras in classrooms, offices, bathrooms, et cetera. Video feeds would not be monitored, but would record for later viewing if needed. My feeling is that whenever the topic of security cameras is at hand, there always needs to be a balance between safety and privacy. Various opinions and anecdotal stories were shared at the meeting, but I think we need a broader scope of opinions and perspectives and would love to have the CSSJC discuss this. After all, the committee name perfectly describes the things that I think need to be considered when it comes to security cameras, community safety, and social justice. Um, the next meeting of the school committee is Thursday, November 17th. Um, at that time, I believe ASC will be asked to decide vote on guidance to the school building design team on the presence of security cameras. That's basically the request. So discussion. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do we know if uh, Jennifer won, is this like official from school committee or, sh or you know, is she expecting us to write to the uh, school committee um what is our plan tonight when we deliberate when we discuss i think that it's not necessarily asking for a formal statement yay or nay but just kind of you know she said that if you have a discussion it would be helpful to you know to go back and, and view what you have to say just to kind of get the perspectives so um okay it's kind of like a broad ask just my instinct um i don't trust security camera in public schools especially for you know kids of color if they're going to be used against them i can see you know having had a child with special need you know if he were the only child I have, I can see it. Okay, I can see the value to it, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling the security camera in the building. That's just my opinion. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah, so I guess like, um, Allegra, and I, Allegra, I don't know if you have this, this answer because I know she sent an email. So 
I guess, so they're going to be voting on this. Did they say what's the basis for putting those cameras in, in the new elementary school? Um, was there any reason why they're they're installing cameras where I don't think there's any cameras in, in the other schools? I did not read anything in the email specifically about it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, this email came in I think the day after the um, first meeting that we had with uh, the town council in which um, the, the motion was made to postpone the discussion. And um, so it, okay. it, it was in my email box and it kind of slipped my mind. Um, so I, you know, I don't have the exact answer. I mean, from what the email says, it doesn't sound as if it's necessarily, well, as if they're positioning it as a surveillance thing mm -hmm. necessarily that would be continually monitored. But I'm wondering, I think that's a, I think that's a good question. Like, is it, what, why are they there? Is it, is it because of the climate around, you know, school shootings and, and going back and seeing what, what people see because i i think that that gets invoked a lot as as um kind of a obvious and obviously it is a safety concern and but i don't and i i don't have an answer for your question is the short answer okay no no problem um so for me in terms of my take um on it my thoughts um i think you know i have to go like with what miss pat um was saying too that yeah for me it would be a no-go um just because you know, right now they're saying they're not going to be viewing those the, the footage, but who's to say they they won't be viewing the footage, right? When it when it suits them, and also, um, yeah, what will it be utilized against um, students who are marginalized? You know, students who be begin to be on um, the administrators' radars, right? And then now they're going to be tracking them, you know, more so on those cameras. I was asking about the basis because obviously it's like, why are you making this change? Is there a reason? It doesn't seem like there's a reason, you know, in terms of here, you know, obviously I understand nationally, so on and so forth, but in terms of in our community, um, and it is, you know, once you stop putting cameras, then, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, kind of, as they say, right, big brother, big sister, big whatever, watching and things like that. Um, and, you know, it really encroaches upon privacy and especially our young people, you know, we're the ones that have to protect them, right? They're minors. A lot of times they, they um, don't take their viewpoints or their voice into consideration. So for us as the adults, we have to be the ones to kind of be like, no, this is encroachment on their privacy. Um, and if there's no um, basis for it, um, why are you making this, this, you know, why are you trying to put cameras in this new elementary school? Um, and even if there was basis, I would have to really look at what that was and really, you know, have a conversation in terms of that, you know? So, um, so yeah, for all of those reasons, I would say not, not a good thing. Thank you, Deb. Um, D. Yeah, so it's it's a lot of red flags for me. Someone that studies, you know, communication. Um, Simone Brown had a really good book on uh, surveillance of black bodies, mm -hmm. and it always ends up reinforcing racism, um, just because you have that data, and who's looking at that data how it's collected, how it's used uh, eventually. So that's really problematic for me, for our kids, you know, already uh, to, to be tracked in that way. The other thing that comes up in any of these schools is the question that Deb put forth. What's the clear statement of, you know, the, the school district and the school committee as an appropriate reason for installing cameras into this new school? I mean, have they made an argument or do they just think, oh, this is great technology. This is a good idea. We have a new school. Let's install the new technology to protect our building. So 
you know, that that's really problematic. I'd like to hear the argument that they're trying to make. And then what's the, the responsibility of those folks who are going to be uh, accessing those cameras? Who is it? You know, is it going to be uh, school administrators, teachers, uh, CRESS, uh, you know, paraprofessionals? They're, they're, that's gonna be someone's job. So I'd like to, again, have, have a clear line of who's going to be maintaining, accessing this, this data. Um, and then, you know, kid goes to high school four years or elementary school or, you know, whatever. How long is this data? Because it's all digital data. How long will it be kept? So those are, you know, those are concerns, you know, kept until an incident occurs for evidence. How, how long is it kept? How is it used? So I, you know, it sounds like I need to attend that next uh, school committee meeting to ask these questions because um, if there's not a clear argument and they can't make a really good argument other than, oh, we have funding for this and it seems like a great idea, um, it's unnecessary. Thank you, Defreka. Um, I think for a project that is coming online in 2026, if I heard correctly, um, we need to have more time to get some of these questions answered and there are quite a few of them. Um, I don't think there might be much point in, perhaps we could still deliberate this evening, but um, from my, in my own perspective, by reflex, I would be opposed to it, but that's nearly an uninformed position. Um, it would be good to know what um, the issues of cameras in schools generally are, and also what that would apply to in this specific case. So I think we just need more time um, for such a wavy um, topic to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Philip, do you have anything you want to add? I just will echo that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'd like to know the reasoning, like why, what's, what's the point of them, and to the other point, like, why in the new elementary school but then not make it in the middle school or the high school like it just it just seems very strange and i just would like to understand the reasoning and with that i, I think that i can't really speak too much about it okay um i certainly agree with all the concerns that have been raised about why why the cameras might be put in and what what their intent versus what their impact might be. Um, I mean, speaking from my previous experience working in a girl's um, detention facility where we had cameras everywhere. And one of my jobs as the clinical director was to review camera footage when something happened. Like I know that the impact of those cameras are often, you know, to identify wrongdoing and and dole out punishment. Um, and while I could understand perhaps, a, you know, I guess the, putting my parent hat on and, and all the horrible, you know, things that have happened, especially in Valde with the elementary school shooting last year, obviously there is some heightened anxiety that goes in waves after these school shootings happen. So, I, you know, if if there was a security reason for the perimeter to be observed, but I think still, if, if something happened outside, they could still go back and review that footage and get a kid in trouble for something that unrelated to a big security breach. Um, I, I think I would be a firm no on inside of the school. I think that that especially is um, 
questionable to me. And, and um, yeah, I think, I think that it's true, like the information provided um, in the email at least didn't, didn't in my mind give a specific reason for why they were asking, you know, why they're talking about putting cameras in. And I think, you know, I, I haven't gone back to review the meeting that she referenced. So it's, it's possible that the reasons are outlined in that meeting and I just haven't done my due diligence. Um, but I do, I do think that it's certainly questionable. And then does it open the door to like, oh, well, we're going to put cameras in all the schools and, and then we're, you know, how are we going to use those cameras elsewhere? And, um, and I think that that opens the door for some trouble. Yeah, I think we need more information. And, you know, I can find out from uh, Jennifer Shaw Page, um, uh, Jennifer Shaw, and um, if she wants to provide more information. But I guess, yeah, we can go back and look at the committee meeting. Mm -hmm. But maybe she can sum it up. Miss Pat? So I just want to thank Jennifer for uh, Shaw for bringing this to CSSJC attention. Um, you know, when I saw that on agenda, um, what came to my mind, I said, I can see where this makes sense for daycare. I know my kids will not send, you know, my grandkids to daycare that doesn't have camera because they like to monitor, you know, that's a way for parents, young parents to monitor what is happening to their kids at daycare centers. For me as a parent who has you know, a child that has significant needs, like physical included, you know, I will react differently as opposed to my other kids. Like, you know, um, I can see where the benefit is, but definitely not in our school system. Daycare, yes, but not in our school system. Um, are we, you know, is there going to be like preschool at Fort Worth at the new school? I'm just wondering why somebody will suggest camera in elementary school. It's, it's just out of curiosity that is it 100% no for me. But then we don't have any power. It's just to, you know, give our opinion. That's it. Thank wow. you, Ms. Pat Freke. Um, I suppose by bringing this up to the committee, um, what um, is needed from us is not deliberation, but areas of concern. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it might come from some questions that we may have. And so I would suggest that uh, if the meeting is on the 17th, do I, did I get that correctly? I, um, November 17th. Um. 17th, yes. So if it's by that time, if um, we have questions, we could um, send that out um, to by email have them listed and maybe sent to um, that meeting or to whoever is um, appropriate to get some of those questions answered. I think that's a great idea. Um, and should we do it the way that we did for the finance director, where we send all of our questions to either Pamela or Jennifer um, so that we're not violating open meeting law? Is that Jen? Is that okay? Or Pamela? Um, uh, sure. You you would like you're going to send to us send to Jen and I the questions that we will then send out back to the group for um, for school committee for the yeah. questions yeah. pertaining yeah to the uh, surveillance. Uh, <laughs> I'm already calling surveillance, but the cameras in the schools. Yeah. Sure. I, I think that yeah. we. We can um, get gather that that information. So let's see if the meeting is the seventeenth. Today is the ninth. Um, what if we try and send everything by next Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, and then is that is that a reasonable time frame? Like a week from today. Um, so 
that so these are individualized questions is that right they're not mm -hmm. like a, a statement from the group correct so i think that's pretty easy if we get it by that monday or tuesday um so jen can have it because i'm sure they have to put their um you know in the agenda and mm -hmm. all of that so um Je meaning jennifer shall um so if it's just individualized questions couldn't we just send them to pam and <clears throat> uh and it wouldn't have to be so formal where we have to create like a list or a statement from the whole group Sure. I'm asking. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting that, formality. Yeah, that way it'll go quicker is what I'm saying. So if they're just questions that we have to send to Jennifer Shaw, thanks for, you know, could be really short email that's composed at that point. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. These are some of the questions that came up from our group. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That works. That good. Yeah. So try and send that information to Pamela and Jen. On Monday. I mean, I I have my questions, basically the ones I I stated to you all. All right. By Monday. So would it be okay if because I'm, my guess is that some of you guys have the same questions if we just consolidate the questions? Yes. That would be great. Okay. All right. So I think what we're going to get done here tonight, just a suggestion, is the update on uh, what's going on July 5th. Mm -hmm. And then what do y'all think about adjourning after that? I think, that's, I think that's good. And I just, I mostly wanted um, the two incidents on people's radar screen if they hadn't heard about them, because I do think, especially in the UMass um, incident, there is the component named of racial discrimination, possibly towards the student from the officer. Um, and in the Hampshire College incident, the Dean of Students wrote to the entire college saying, please don't call the police um unless like you're in serious danger of dying um so i think that's pretty significant um and i just wanted to make sure that our our record shows that we are looking at all all of the police departments right now and and seeing what what they have been doing and and being abreast of other complaints that have been made um, absolutely i mean we can look at it all together does someone um want to give the summary of where we are with the july 5th issue before before we do that i have uh like two requests to make okay okay with people so um some community members would like to know, and I, myself included, like to know, uh, would like to request a list of contractors and consultants to Ames Police Department. And I like uh, a time frame of 10 years from 2012, uh, from 2011 to 2021 list of consultants and contractors of MS police. So Ms. Young, Ms. Moisten, is that something you guys will request on behalf of CSSJC? Or is there something I should be requesting directly? I'm not clear as to, in terms so of it, requesting I mean, documents. Um, it, I, tried, I tried to request document from the finance department director on upper funding um, usage for bed and i still have not we have not received it um, for 650k that was given to bed um but i will table that for ne next month but how what is the process of requesting document because that's what cssjc is like you know for us to be looking at everything 
that deals with social justice and safety. Yeah. So I, well, the contractors and consultants would that go through the bid process will be on the website a lot within the same ones that are from the police station because they all go on the same, they're, they're all there under, I think if you go, I, I don't have the, my computer up right now, but those things should be online under the accounting department. Well, what, thank you, Ms. Marston, but what people want is to be part of CSSJC packet and you know, um, you know, we want like specific list for people who are who you know uh, who have been contracted by APD. That way, we know where people stand. You know, when police misconduct happens, we know why they're saying what they're saying. So we need to expose the list of contractors and consultants with MS Police Department in this town. That's the reason. No, I understand that. I'm just trying to think of how, like, how to make that happen into the packet. So, well, that know, should come I'll from. I need a, a, a little. Well, I mean, the 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 information is online, and so, I you know I can check in with Sean and see, but and then the stuff for the bid should be online as well too. I guess for me is so we're talking about history here. Like, you know, if somebody wants to look at the work of CSSJC, I don't think they will, they will go. I hear what you're saying and I appreciate what you're saying, Ms. Boyston. But I don't think to me personally, I know there is tons of information in our town website. It is exhausting for me sometimes to look for stuff. So it would be nice to have, you know. CSSJC packet for people, it's a public record forever, for people to pull stuff. So we need to know the list of consultants and contractors to APD. The list from 2011 to 2021. Should I be asking the finance director for that? Well, I think, so I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to make sure that it does, if you ask outside of the CSSJC, then that becomes a public records request, which there's a, a fee attached to that. So you, let me just see, why don't I just do this? Why don't I get in touch with the accounting department tomorrow? Thank and you. then I'll email everybody from CSSJC how we should proceed with that. Okay, well, Jennifer, well, can I in just like interject? Can I interject one quick thing just to add to what you're saying, though, Ms. Pat? I mean, I guess like what we're asking, um, Jennifer, is just that obviously, you know, we're a volunteer group. You know, we, as you know, right, we do a lot to kind of be in here and, and trying to, to read up and prepare and everything. So what we need is to kind of really minimize what else we need to do outside, right? Outside of this meeting and things like that to go hunting down on online. I mean, I get it that the information is there, but to go hunt it down, go take out another couple of hours. So what we're asking is that, you know, like Ms. 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 Pat already had asked for that information from Sean. You know, I get it that you all are busy and stuff like that. However, we're a group that we need this information, we need this data, right? So how is it that we can get this information? So if we need something in order to be able to deliberate and to order to be able to make sound decisions, we need that information. So how is it that we can get that information, right? So is it, you know, with you, you know, we don't want to have to do a lot of this legwork again outside of this because we don't get paid for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, so how can how can you or, or, or Pamela or whomever, you know, maybe as a group, we need to, to ask someone else, but we need to get that information though. It's not okay that, that we've asked this information beforehand and we haven't gotten. Yeah, the upper funding for bid. Thank you, Deb, for saying this so much. The upper funding, everybody listen, $650,000 was given to business improvement district. And then hundreds and hundreds of business owners in this town, was only allocated $100,000. How is that equity? How is that equity? I've been asking for the utilization of funding to bid wealthy commercial land owners in this town. How is that fair? $650,000, okay? We need 
to get the full utilization of the funding included in our packet. I've invited our finance director to come and do presentation on APA funding and he's busy, I get that, but it's not going to go away. I'll bring it up again. If it's January or February, it's not going to go away. Fine, you know, finance of this town, follow the money. We're going to expose everything. Thank you. So if we could put that on the agenda for next time, I know it's a conversation we've been trying to have, but we can center on that for next time. And again, we're making the request, it sounds like, for um, the ARPA funds report. Uh, and now in addition to a report on co contractors um, that the police have worked with. So even though it's out of order, um, please take note and uh, let us know if you all are uh, able to, to have that for in our packets for the next meeting. Pam. So let's hold on. I believe that Sean had provided the information on the ARPA funding and it was included in a packet but um, from several meetings ago, but it kept getting postponed. That, that is my memory is that some documentation was provided, um, but it, the issue didn't get addressed in the meeting and it got postponed. But I, so I believe that the information, it has been included in a prior packet and we can take a look to see um, if that doesn't address everything that you want, but I know that in one of the prior packets, there was information that was provided. Uh, as to the second um, part of the question, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I know that in one of the prior packets, there was information provided um, by Sean in the finance department. Okay, Ms. Pat, before you go, I just want a point of order as a crew because it is 816. That's right, yeah. Are we going to discuss any updates having to do with July 5th and the two recent incidences on Hampshire College and UMass's college involving UMass police and then town police? Well, for me, I think I only have bandwidth to, to talk about the, um, um, the July nine. 5th situation because um, that's coming up you know, next week in terms of a meeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, well- so That's what yeah. I'm asking before we, we start talking about, you know, um, ARPA, you know, funds and et cetera, which is all important, but mm -hmm. I just want to keep us straight in what we all have been with for yeah. tonight as well. So, yeah. Uh, so if, yeah, if I may suggest, let's table the UMass and Hampshire College, they're very, and you know, they're very important incidents. I think we should discuss July 5th. The only thing I wanted to say about the, you know, the bid, APA funding that I requested and the business is we needed to know who applied, who get funded, who was uh, who were denied? All those information we didn't get. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Pat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay, Pam, you have a question or a comment? Oh, your hand's still up. Okay. So, um, as you all know, because <laughs> we were all there, the last meeting with the town council. From my understanding, maybe Allegra can help me out here, is that um, our next meeting, there's going to be um, another motion, um, maybe a couple of more motions uh, regarding this issue from the town council or town council members. So um, the meeting is on the 14th Monday. Um, I don't believe it's a joint meeting. I believe we, because they have gotten to the point where they are discussing the motion and um, possibly voting on the motion, we are not part of that discussion. Um, so the motion, 
that is on the that was on the floor um, at twelve forty five before the um, before Mr. Steinberg motions to um, postpone the meeting is the motion that Lynn Griesmer had put forward. Um, and I believe that Jen Moyston had sent out um, an addendum to the packet um, right before the meeting, um, which does include the motion that was on the floor, some counselors amendments to the motion, and then an additional motion that will be discussed after the first motion. So I don't know. Oh, I can screen share, right? Let's see. Let me make sure. I hope so, because I'm looking for it. <laughs> I apologize if I don't do this correctly. There we go. I did it. Can you see it? Are we in the packet? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, the addendums at the end. Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah. So let me yeah this is the motion that is on the floor um so i guess um and i see deb has her hand up i guess would it be helpful to frame our discussion for the remainder of the evening as to whether or not we want to voice any support for this or any of the motions um would that be helpful to frame our discussion in that way um, or doesn't, or are we just generally discussing things? <sighs> well, our response to the motion, you know, is this, um, cause you're saying this is Lynn Griesmer's motion or is this some, whose motion is this? I believe this is Lynn Griesmer's motion. Cause this was the motion that was on the floor. Oh, okay. Um, and then if you scroll down or if I scroll down, there are additional amendments um some of which maybe they will put in no they don't it would be nice if they just then put what it would actually say not just a lot of bread striking out but that's just my brain um so there's a second amendment a third amendment and then the additional motion this um, crazy so uh deb you have a comment or question yeah, so I mean, first I have a comment and a, and um, kind of like uh, idea, I guess, or or an opinion around these motions. So first, a comment is just in terms of obviously we were on that meeting, um, you know, the last time uh, for over six hours, you know, um, and I had started that meeting with there needed to be action and something done around July fifth. This has been going on since July fifth. And nothing came out of that meeting yet again, you know, so totally frustrating, totally. If I'm frustrated, I can't only imagine the young people and the families who have actually been impacted by this. Right. And so um, just continuing to, to prolong this. And now now with these gazillion motions, right, that, you know, then they, they you know, they change one sentence and then they vote against it. You know, I mean, it, it's just really, you know, very ridiculous at this point. Um, and so for me, it's just kind of like, you know, what are we going to do as a group to really send the message that this is not okay? And then I sent Lynn a, a separate email when she had sent that, that email about what was going to be happening on the 14th. That is disrespectful that CSSJC is not part of the, of the meeting. I'm sorry. I don't care that it's just that they're talking about motions. At least have the decency to invite us, even if we're just going to be there as panelists and stuff like that. It's, it's just the right thing to do was to have us there because that's how we started it, right? It was a joint meeting to discuss this issue. Now they basically kicked us out and, and are now going to just have this endless, you know, um, brouhaha for the next, I don't know how many hours next time, you know, around tweaking sentences and words and so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and again, it, it's just going to prolong the issue. This motion, uh, you know, I don't agree with it, <laughs> you know, um, it just, you know, talks about the town manager, you know, working with, you know, town staff to, to, you know, to, to kind of go, you know, to look into to things and it's, it's very soft language uh, in terms of follow up. Um, and, and it kind of really 
doesn't have us in terms of our group and HRC and AAR and sorry, I, I messed up the other ones, AARH, <laughs> I'm sorry for the third group, but anyway, the reparations group to have us front and center, you know, in terms of having reps there. Um, and I think we need to be involved in, in whatever happens in, in regards to this. Uh, I don't have any confidence in the town manager being able to come up with anything, um, you know, that really would address the issues in terms of our demands and what we have said about accountability, apology, compensation fund, and, and oversight board and so on and so forth. So anyway, those are my points, th those are my thoughts. What are we gonna do as a group to really send the message to yet again, they've wasted our time, they've wasted the, the family and youth time and they're disrespecting us. Thank you, Deb. Um, Ms. Pat? I'm not going to labor this issue too long to give other people opportunity because it's like 825 right now. First of all, to address um, Debs, what are we going to do? I think what the town council uh, leader and some of the white folks there is that they don't want the whole truth to come out. However, the truth has come out, but we need a group to put it all together. So my uh, uh, suggestion would be for CSSJC to write a comprehensive report of what happened on July 5th to include the voices of the real people who were there because the reports we've heard did not include you know, the victims, and I hate to use this word. We need to put everything for history sake so that it will be in our packet. It will go to all the media, everything. We put it out there, okay? So that's one thing to send a very strong message that the police chief just wasted everybody's time and, you know, defending his officers like, that's one, that's one action we can take, okay? The second thing is that there's not going to be any reconciliation. That doesn't even make any sense. How are we going to have healing and reconciliation in this town when we, you know, there is no plan to get a comprehensive report. There is no public apology. Um, they're not even talking about creating compensation fund. I have news for our town. You know, there are other options these families and youth can take, including the legal process. And the town will be forced to negotiate and settle. And guess what? When, when, when issues get into lawyers, attorneys, it costs more money. So if, it, if, if, if it's that route, there will be no reconciliation. That's why CSJC, our committee, is trying to advocate for you know, a better positive approach of uh, justice compensation fund. So there are other avenues. And as for the meeting that is coming back on, on 14, it's another show. It will be another fourth show. The first one in August, where we have the chief police report without the youth input. The second one in October, when one hour meeting was scheduled on reasonable time allo allocated. The third show when, was when I read six motions being put before the meeting. And then at the meeting, it was seven. So again, on Monday, it's going to be another show to drag it because this is not a priority for the council chair and some of the white folks at town council. Let's face it. And I'm calling on our town manager to do something. He's a smart guy. He can do better. Being quiet isn't enough. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. D? Yeah, thank you, Ms. Pat. So item uh, four does talk about research into the feasibility of a compensation fund. My main problem with all of the motions is that it does not include um, the police chief taking responsibility and an actual apology. That hasn't happened. 
I don't, you know, there has been all this stuff in the public. The police chief has not apologized, okay? He said, oh, his officer made a, uh, an error, but the police chief has not modeled you know, reconciliation and social justice by just admitting, hey, there was, that's, it's my misstep, you know, and getting a statement out there and apologizing quickly, vacation or not, okay? So that's, that's the first thing with all of these motions, it doesn't include it, okay? The other thing it doesn't include for any of these items is a timeline. So they're going to explore, they're going to conduct research, they're going, and each one of them, you know, um, manifest this uh, same thing in, in different ways. Some want to hire consultants, some don't, um, but there's no timeline. So my concern on all of it is that it will never get done. So I actually like the idea of writing a report. We would issue our own report. Um, but then what happens beyond that, the report? So, you know, in terms of accountability, I do see, as you say, Ms. Pat, it going towards, um, you know, a legal, uh, uh, legal procedure and, that's, that's not our responsibility at that point. We have done all we could do in bringing attention and trying to care for these young people and their families. We have other stuff that, we, that needs to happen. And I'm, it's not that I'm saying to move on, but I think we will have to diversify our roles and our tasks here. So while that's going on in the background and we stay on it, like, okay, you have this motion, we can critique the motion for what it fails to do, but we do have other things that are kind of um, in the background that we need to attend to. They are saying in, in some of the motions, such as the Youth Empowerment Center, you know, as part of the capital improvement plan, I really need to see what that means in terms of the funding and again, the timeline. You know, what about the multicultural center? There are other things that the CSWG brought up that when we talk about community safety, they were all a part of it. So I agree this, these motions fail to really provide um, a solution and an answer for our community. Thank you, Dee. Philip or Freca, do you have anything about this motion that you wish to share? Um, I think for a body that is deliberative and legislative, um, there's no problem with these motions. It's what they do. And I think um, the deliberative legislative process is supposed to be slow. Um, and so for these motions, I um, don't really have an issue with them. With regard to a timeline, I think that could be done in these motions. Now, there are nine that I see here, and what could happen is we figure out what is most imminent and create timelines according to um, what we think should be done immediately and um, leave more time for what um, can be done afterwards. That really isn't a problem in that regard. Um, with regard to a statement from um, the youth. I would be in support of that as long as we recognize that that is not um, a comprehensive report, but it is an opportunity for our group to, um, or our committee to 
um, allow the voices of those who were part of this incident um, express themselves. We, it would be in that case, some kind of mouthpiece. But if that happens, then we are left in a situation where you have a standstill between two voices, which takes me back to what I have maintained that I will continue to maintain, which is that we should find a way to get um, to the bottom of it in terms of the report that has all those um, voices together. Um, I think for now, that is what um, I would like to settle with. That is one, for the council, for them to do their work, they have to discuss and then they have to come to um, some kind of motions where they can vote up or down, that is fine. That is going to take time. We can help them by um, creating some kind of priority and giving a possible timeline for some of those motions. And then two, um, we can amplify the voices of those youth. Um, and perhaps I'll end with this. There is nothing wrong with a legal solution. If the, count, the uh, town seems fine with that and if the youth um, seem fine with it as well, then so be it. But I think we've done enough and we can move on to other things. Thank you. Thank you, Freke. Um, Philip, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, I just, I will add that I think that there was an effort on the town council to push us out of the conversation and it was definitely successful on their end. We are not in this next meeting and majority of these motions, it, like motion two, motion three, like Motion three is very clear that whoever was highlighting or editing out that that even discussion with the CSSJC and the HRC and the AHRA is out of that motion on the amendment. And so like motion two has the victim compensation fund crossed out. And so all these just efforts on their end just to have basically another go around as it is said and uh, Ms. Pat highlighted from August 15th to when the first discussion happened that now it'll happen on November 14th. And I can't imagine, I mean, we only went through one motion that night and spent six hours. I don't know how they're gonna get through these three motions and come up with the solution. So I think I, I will just voice my frustration in that and that it does not seem that this is a high priority for the town council and that efforts to push other voices other than the town manager um, was successful. And so with that, I will just say that highlighting and amplifying the voices of the families and the youth, I think is a great strategy on our end to still be active in this and possibly if, if that's releasing a letter or releasing whatever it is just to have kind of something to counterdict as Miss Pat put also just to have it on the history books that like hey the police report wasn't the only report out there there are some discrepancies that just didn't get looked into if that's all our body is able to do. And I, I guess that's that's all I have. Thank you, Philip. Freke, your hand is back up. Um, I can't reiterate this enough. The legislative process is frustrating, and perhaps it is supposed to be frustrating. You have different interests that are coming together, and they will not all agree. And that is why you have a lot of that red ink. By the way, um, yesterday was the midterm elections that we had and the results are out and very soon we'll see the same thing play out in Congress. We might not like it, but that's what a legislative body um, is intended to do. It is intended to frustrate and it frustrates bad plans. And sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time it frustrates good plans. Um, but 
at the end of the day, action sometimes can be good and action sometimes can um, not be good. The question would be, would we rather push through because when we're looking at the town council and when we're looking at this committee and we're looking at this incident, it becomes a question of what is the president set for other things that might come before such a body and before the town. And so I say embrace the frustration, but put a search light on it and point out what the process is so that if there are ways in which we can grease the wheels to make things run smoother, then we do it. Um, but to focus on these motions as being tantamount to pushing us away, I don't think that is the case. I think it is the council doing what it is meant to do. No, I think it was Deb, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, frick it. I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. You know, obviously, you know, we, 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 we're in a country that has all, you know, the different bodies and so on and so forth and a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of um, kind of processes and things like that. And we know in Congress, as you bring up this gerrymandering, right, that, that you know, you just keep things going around and around and around and, and you make it go, you make it die, basically. Uh, but for us, we, we are not, you know, that body, right? We're here to really, you know, look at a situation, um, give voice to the voiceless, right? Which was those young people um, in terms of what happened to them. Um, you know, on July 5th, when they were basically, you know, had you know, had them all sit down, almost kind of like they were in a lineup and then had them, you know, let them know that they did not have any rights, okay? Um, at a majority uh, people of color, uh, you know, youth of color group. Um, and then, you know, proceeded to do all the different things. I mean, we've we've gone on and on and on in terms of all of the information that we've we found out. And then really the only time they they really ended up really listening was when thankfully the white parent, you know, that was there <laughs> told his side of the events. Now all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. You know, this happened. Whereas before, <laughs> you know. All the other parents and young people had made the statements. It was still kind of like, what? What do you mean? I mean, just that is, again, racism in all its ugly facets, right? Um, so, you know, we have to push. This is what's happening with this. This is the fourth month that this has happened, you know? And the town council taking its own sweet time and, and continuing in this process of, you know, diluting you know, what it is, we've 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 sent, you know, a list of things that we wanted to happen over and over again. At the last meeting, uh, one of the councils, Mandy Joe, was just kind of like, oh, I didn't even know what you all were asking. What do you mean you didn't know what we are asking? We've sent documents to the town council, you know, really clearly stating what we were asking, you know, for. So it, it's, it's, again, the runaround, you know, that's what we're, we're, we're receiving is the runaround. Um, and it's not the whole thing about, you know, things take time. You know, when they want things to go quickly, it happens quickly, especially when it's arresting a black body or brown body. That happens very quickly. However, when it comes time to remedy and, and look at and take accountability for actions, you know, and I remember I was at the, t at the town meeting when the town manager basically said that he felt like the chief was the best police chief in Massachusetts. I'm just kind of like, so how how are we going to rely on him to take the correct actions to remedy the situation without representatives from our from from these three groups who are majority BIPOC groups? How are we going to rely on him to, to do what what should be done to deal with this? I'm sorry. I'm not going to rely on it. And I'm not just going to sit back and wait for the legislative process or the town council process to continue down down the path. We need to voice what is happening here, which is a lot of nothing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, us pushing and nothing happening. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. And so we need to figure out what we need to do to, to, to make some results happen. Thank you, Deb. Um, Dee? 
Yeah, I just really feel strongly this is a failure of our town manager in his capacity, as Ms. Pat has put it, as the CEO. It is his failure as the head of all the departments in this town to take responsibility and to act proactively on behalf of these young people and their families. It is his failure. Now, the town council, they, you know, their responsibility in their deliberation, Freke, to push and to demand that the town manager act. And so I hear you about the deliberation and this is the process, but as we've said before, there are things that uh, could happen that are much more immediate, that could help these families and these young people feel whole, that they can act on as a governing body. And then there are the long-term and many are listed within these motions for the long-term. So, you know, that, are, that take deliberation, that take discussion. It is a failure of our town manager and that larger governing body to respond once again to incidences where black and brown people have been unfairly treated. Straight no chaser. Now, again, as, as us, we have to decide, well, what do we do? Do we become more activists in that way? And, you know, bring this to bear? Or do we function as a committee and sit solidly in what our mission and our goals have been put forth by the town manager to do. And that's what we have been for the last four months practicing. Beyond, you know, what our charge is even. So this is a failure of our town manager and the town council, period. And I think we need to really challenge them on that. And and you know, uh, have the community really challenge them on that. This is where our tax dollars are going, are not going. So, um, Freke, I want to address this to you briefly. I hear you about legislative uh, branch being sometimes the process slower. However, I think I want to remind all of us what our role is, is to provide input to all departments and uh, committees in this town. And the town council has chosen to continue to disrespect us. And so I use the wisdom that I gained when I was in the leadership of CPAC and I advised parents and I continue to do that. And I said, you know, the school will, you know, run you around so much, just do other stuff. Don't let them like, you know, run you as long as you're not breaking the law. And I hope that this will start sinking in with us, with this group, okay? It is very clear that the town council does not want the truth to be out there. So they don't want to go there, but we need to do the opposite. We need to get the voices, the full report of the witnesses who were there that night. I will get a draft for our next meeting for people to read the full report of what happened that night. So they don't want that, but it's going to come out. They can't stop us. We have some power, but we don't realize it. Take your power, you can do that. We will, we will get that out. That's one thing. The second thing is the elephant in the room. I predicted several years ago about the former superintendent 
not doing good with special education, I call for that superintendent to consider stepping down. People did not listen to me. She eventually stepped down on her own on a different matter, but I knew, and I'm using the same guy with our current police chief, okay? Protecting his officers, being arrogant, refusing to apologize, and I'm still waiting for the town council chair to publicly apologize to me for silencing me when I made a comment about the police chief considering to step down. That's not going to be healing in this town where we have the police chief on the hem of APD. That's not going to happen because this guy is not ready to unite people to get, you know, to apologize. He's too arrogant for our town. We can do better. As a matter of fact, I think the town, the town manager might have a point. If he considers our police chief one of the best in our state, if that's the yardstick of comparing the best police chief, it should make all Massachusetts residents worry. That's the way I took it. If that's the measure of excellence, it's our police chief. People should worry about our state of other police chiefs. That's the way I, I, I look at it. And so we have moved needle. If people remember when I, I first brought it up in our group that you know the BIPOC youth had approached me to be their spokespeople uh, uh, person, I made a prediction that this incident would define our town for 2022. I don't know if people, people can go back and look at YouTube. And it happened. It happened. Because I know the town we're dealing with. Black people, BIPOC people do not matter to decision makers the people who have more power in this town. That's what it's all about. It's about white supremacy. It's about racism. This is why this is being stalled. The same town council had no problem, okay, increasing or um, approving a building, Jones Library, Dog Park. They, you know, if they want to deliberate something fast, they will. They don't want this because this exposes the truth. That's what this is all about. I will attend the meeting on, on Monday and listen in, but it's all for show. That's what I'm calling these meetings. It's all for show. But we have power. Let's use it. Let's use it. We've already accomplished something, and I hope people will take care of themselves. I want to use this opportunity to thank people who have publicly supported CSJC. Thank you. You know who you are. People who have supported us privately, we appreciate you. This work is very hard, but we're not doing it for personal gain. We're doing it because we want to make a mess a better place. And I want my great great grandkids in the future to read my role in this town as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a request for a motion? So, Philip? Yeah, I just had one other thing to add to, and I think I'll echo a little bit about like, yeah, if we're saying that this police chief is the best police chief in this state, that is definitely an interesting statement and way to process the whole being of unbiased investigation, if that's where the direction that we're going. And that if we're allowing this body, this town council to proceed that way without any other input, that that's not the route that I would like to go, but, uh, and forgive me, it's, it's a little bit late and I'm losing my thought there, but I will come there. <laughs> it is that the town already has pushed it away 
in a way that I think that it's it's just going to be difficult to come back to and back from in that policing in this area has already become so much more problematic in this little time frame since July 5th of the Hampshire College incident, the UMass incident, um, that where some uh, person of color has been arrest arrested. There's a TikTok video that is going around on UMass, and I know we're not talking about this incident, so I won't get too much into it, but that these um, young black women were stopped and almost thrown off of a bus and different things. And the police officer there, which I believe was a UMass PD officer, told them to go to the back of the bus and telling someone of black heritage that is that just is very, very just problematic in that way. And what we're going to say, oh, that was a misstep of words. Oh, you shouldn't use a statement. You shouldn't do this. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, what, like, what, what century, what era are we living in? Because it seems as if we're going way back. And that's, this is what sets those precedents, right? Like, had there been a better response to this incident in town, maybe police officers would have been a little bit put on notice for what they say and a little bit as to, oh, yeah, we need to really like watch what we do and what we're going on. And correct me if I'm wrong. But was the answer not that we sent our APD officers to UMass for training on de-escalation because of this response of July 5th? And we're sending them to de-escalation training that now there's a, <laughs> another video out there that we just sent them to like a problematic place, right? So I, I just don't understand the process. And that's the point that I wanted to highlight. And thank you for traveling with me on there. <laughs> so Pam has something to say, but real quick, um, I want to ask, are we trying to make a motion to respond to this, to send a message uh, for the next meeting since we won't be present? Um, what What's our goal in our own deliberation? So just I'll, so I'll hold that. Pam, if you can speak. Yeah, I just want to um, clarify that the de-escalation training was held at UMass, but it was not delivered by UMass uh, Police Department. It was done through another organization affiliated with the Department of Justice. Thank you, Pam, for that clarification. Um, I guess to get back to Dee's question, my my thought was I'd like to know if we wanted to respond or not. Um, and it certainly sounds like many people are saying they don't wanna respond formally to, I, and, and I before we make that decision, I do wanna bring up the last motion, which isn't amendments to this motion, but actually kind of gets at what other people are saying. Um, so I see Freka has his hand up. Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I don't know if you- well, that's, that's, I'm not, I, I am also trailing at this time. <laughs> so. um, I suppose for the committee, there are different reasons why we all would agree that we shouldn't respond to this motion. So I would just like to give my own reason, which is simple. Um, it may happen that none of those motions pass. And in that case, it is ineffectual, whatever we have to say right now. It might be more effective if um, we respond to a motion that has passed to either give our sense to that motion or express our um, disagreement with it. Thank you for that. Um, so it sounds again like we don't want to make a formal statement related to these motions. Do we want to just look at the alternate motion? Because um, there is some interesting word. Itch, word that's not a word. <laughs> um, do we want to? Do we want to look at the last page of this amendment? Yeah, I um, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, 
So this is the additional motion. Um, and it's my understanding that all of these motions have been sent to the town attorney for kind of input as to whether they actually would make any sense um, or could be done. But this motion in particular has um, language around a joint statement um, to council and town manager and um again, it does not a I, I believe that might have been taken out um and then asking for an official public report on july 5th incident to include the following documents from the town manager particularly direct reports from police and dei directors as well as from members of the public involved in the incident or with relevant information such as video factual statements or perspectives. Um, and then compensatory repair options for the youth and their families. Um, and that does give a short time frame of by December 19th. Um, And I felt like this was maybe a more direct motion to deal with repair for the incident that occurred on July 5th. And I think it also brings back to light the fact that a lot of the opposition to the motion last meeting was that um, there would be an alternative record created. Um, and I think that that's important, whether or not we do it within the framework of a motion passing, I think that it's something that should be done and something to keep the youth's voices at the forefront of the discussion. Um, so that's all I wanted to say on this. I don't know if other people besides mm -hmm. D have comments they want to make, um, but D. Yeah, I mean, um this is much closer to dealing with um the the topic at hand um and not trying to go around the edges i mean certainly we need a youth empowerment center certainly we need all you know um a discussion on process and procedure all of that's needed but in dealing directly with these young people and their families um this is about the closest motion that gets to it um it does have timelines um december 19th it doesn't you know there's no guarantee that they'll vote on it to say yes you know there's some type of compensation or you know um i do like how it's very open-ended about that repair options including but not limited to cash payments educational scholarships business startup funds home or rental assistance funds i mean they keep it you know they keep it open-ended for for these families and young people to figure out what would help them best um so i don't know if we you know even if we made a motion just in support of this would that even matter but um i do feel that this comes closer that's all pretty much want to say thank you d deborah yeah, I mean, I guess in, in terms of like addressing this issue, it comes closer, but I still have an issue with like number two, um, because it says, you know, all that from the time and particularly is a record post from the chief. And, and I mean, we've we've gone down that 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 rabbit hole already twice, you know, with the reports um, from the chief of police and and, you know, from Pamela. Um, so, you know, all, both times there's been holes in, in, in the reports and it hasn't, it hasn't really kind of gone over. They haven't even spoken with Ms. Pat as the representative of the, the, the students, um, I mean, of the student of the young people, um, and, and included really the, the young people and the families, um, perspectives. Um, so I think, yeah, one and, and three at least go further because it has some, some 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 specific deadlines and things like that. 
Um, but even three, I don't know if it goes far enough, right? It's kind of like, you know, Tom Madison and Reeser provide legal opinion on compensatory repair options. Um, so, you know, what does that really mean? Um, you know, so I, I don't know, we'd have to kind of think through, I don't know if I'm ready to just say, yes, let's go with this one. You know what I'm saying? We'd have to think this through a little bit more as opposed to just jump, but at least it it's on the right step. But number two, you know, it, it's, it's not, we'd have to really tweak that some more um, because we've gone down that path already. Thank you, Deb. Um, Ms. Pat? So what I wanted to say, you know, you all have, you know, touched up on it. Number two, um, regardless whether the town council wants to adopt the one that we produce, it doesn't really matter. We will submit it to them. And if they want to include it, it's their issue. But our goal should be to include the voices of the real witnesses that night, the victims, in our own comprehensive report based on the account of the kids who were there that night. Regardless what they're doing, we're going to produce our own report. So there's nothing wrong with having, you know, multiple reports. Mm -hmm. Whether or not, you know, the town council accepted, that's their problem. But it will be out there publicly. It will be part of our packet. That should be our goal. The, the truth will be exposed. You know, number three, say nothing to me. What I would like to see is the town council directing the town manager to come up with, um, you know, work with the, li the liaison, that's me, you know, you know work, work with the youth through the liaison or whatever to come up with, you know, agreeable uh, negotiation for compensation. I don't see, what is research? What does that mean? So it's not going to stop legal process. It, it will not bring recon reconciliation to our town. It will not bring healing. It's a waste of time. I'm sorry. Thank you. So other than um, some of us maybe attending that meeting as just audience, um, I would, I don't even know if they're going to have public comment to even comment on these motions because I don't think they did last time. Mm -hmm. So it might be something that if we're interested in trying to shape any of this deliberation with these motions to uh, send to the general town council email, perhaps, how we could, um, if we're interested in trying to comment on any of these motions. but we will see what happens on Monday. We're still having a meeting though with town council. Isn't there a joint meeting? No. No. Oh, okay. No. So this is it. And if I may, I don't think we should schedule any meeting with them until we know what we're getting out of the meeting. You know, but I will respect group decision. Let's show them that we're tired of them jerking us around. It's enough. It has to be, you know, what are we getting out of the meeting in the future? And not what they've done to us for the past three meet meetings. We can't take that anymore. But not I mean, one, one, of the, one of the things though, that I'm kind of like, you know, just kind of thinking through though, I mean, I don't think we need to, to, to send them anything like comprehensive, but just a couple of lines to say just that, that they've wasted our time. <laughs> that these motions do not at all reach what it is that we've said. We've already communicated things to them. They, again, disrespecting us by, um, you know, leaving us out of the meeting. I mean, I don't know if it's just enough for us to talk about it and not send them something to just have it documented. So it's part of um, documentation in terms of where we stand. That's something I'm thinking through. But in terms of timing, the meeting is on Monday. I mean, the coaches, you know, they are very, very busy. I mean, is it practical to put out a statement to them? You know, yeah, that's true. I, I hear you. Yeah, the timing is is tough. Yeah. So, 
Um, so I see D has her hand up and then I have, so I'll put my hand up. I don't know how to put my hand up in screen share mode. Can I take the screen down? Are we done with the screen? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thank you all for hanging in there with me and my brain. <laughs> no worries. So okay. yeah, I'm still trying to figure out you know what what are our next steps so i hear you miss pat um a, a report from the cssjc that's more comprehensive includes the voices of the youth of the the families um that's that's one step and we could publish that certainly to the press as well um and not participating in this Monday meeting is, you know, a, a way in which we can make sure that they understand we were disrespected, uh, we were ignored. So why show up anyway? So I'm just trying to figure out what's what's really our next steps. And then lastly, the other things within the CSWG charge I'm really concerned about because, you know, here's the budgeting moment and our Youth Empowerment Center is not funded. Our Multicultural Center is not funded. You know, so those are, are concerns for me because are we missing an opportunity to make those arguments before the budget process. So. Deb? Um, well, I mean, I don't know if we shouldn't uh, attend the meeting because obviously we, we have to monitor them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Maybe we need to have some representative. That doesn't mean all of us have to attend, but you know, maybe some of us need to just to monitor what what's going on. Um, and also, like to add to that list that you said, um, we also need to make sure Pamela has a consultant for the oversight um, board because that needs to be in place like ASAP. You know, and that was really the only thing that one of the counselors I don't know who brought it up and stuff at the last meeting, uh, which which was to say, you know. We need to to get a consultant for for Pamela so that we can get that going because obviously that you know she and others have too much on their plate. They're not going to be able to get that done, and 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 that's something that needs to be in place like yesterday. So that's another budget item that that needs to be kind of front and center. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder if kind of going off what D had said in building with Deborah. I wonder if we craft a very brief statement to try and send out to the press by Monday's meeting, just saying, you know, these are some of the critiques we have, A, with the process that we've already been through with the town council, um, B, with these particular motions that are going before the town council tonight, and then highlighting the things that we do agree with in terms of Let's put the consult, you know, we want to see that there's a consultant for the resident oversight board and that there's a timeline put on that item. Um, I think the youth empowerment center is another one that the way that it's crafted in the motion makes sense. Like we want this and this will be part of the capital improvement plan. That means money. Um, and the other, you know, I mean, I think I obviously the I think the, the language around the justice compensation fund would be not supported in, in what's put forward. But, you know, I, I think if we can put a brief statement forward to the press um, and, you know, send it to the town council email, that would be our way of having our voice at the meeting or in front of the meeting um, without you know being participants in the meeting. And it's a lot to ask all of you to sit through another however many hours it's gonna be. 
um, of deliberations. That's it, it's tiring and it's heartbreaking and it's a lot of work, even if we're not even saying anything, just sitting there and listening to all of that can be a lot. Um, so I, you know, I want to express my gratitude to all of you guys for being in these meetings because um, they're tough. And that's, that's my, do I have to be formal and say like, can we do this? How make a motion? Do I make a motion to put forward a statement to the press? Should I do that? I'll do it. Yeah, I make a motion to put forward. Well, a Ms. Pat, before you do that, Miss Pat, do you have a comment based on that before a motion is made? Yes, thank you, Allegra, for thinking about the media because media, thank you. They've been very helpful, instrumental in keeping this issue alive. And I think it's a smart suggestion. The reason why I say that, even if we write, even if the coaches agree with their busy schedule to write to the town council, they won't read it. People will not even know. They only read stuff that favors them. You know, all you need to know is just last, the, the, the most recent meeting, only one letter from a resident was read by a town councilor. They don't read stuff that doesn't favor them. So I think I, what I'm trying to say is, thank you, I support um, your suggestion. We should do that. Allegra. Thank you. Uh, Freke. I believe we all have um, relationships with some of the councillors. Um, and I think this is an opportunity to um, also individually um, speak with them. And um, for others who might not have such a relationship, find a way to bring them in so that we can um, make good use of the democratic um, process. Whatever will end up getting done will be done by the town council and it will be done by um, the town manager as well. Whether that's going to be under duress or whether that's going to be from their own volition, it's going to be done through those bodies. And in that case, we need to leverage um, the relationships that we have to make whatever um, decision um, done possible. So I think it's a request that I'm making just not just for members of the committee, but for also for those who um, might end up listening to this um, recording, speak to the councillors, whatever place you fall within this issue. That's, I think, how the democratic and uh, political process will work best. Thank you. I see Jennifer has her hand up. Yeah, so there's only so much uh, you can do without violating open meeting law, Freke. So that's that's an important uh, note to, to what you're proposing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other thing is that I would rather just, you know, <laughs> go back to Deborah's bandwidth. I would rather because there's so much going on. Um, hear what they are going to decide on Monday before we then issue a statement. Cause let's say they decide something on Monday and then we're gonna have a response. So let, you know, yay, nay, indifferent. Uh, I'm sure it will all be all imperfect and won't meet any of the needs of, of the young people and the families. Uh, just from what we've seen of these motions, that's not the direction they're really going in. Um, but I would rather see what they end up voting on. And then we can issue a statement. That's in terms of process. I would rather that than we end up making, you know, then we're going to have another statement to issue to the press. Mm -hmm. So that's my suggestion, but I will go with whatever the committee um, decides. I just noticed that um, Councillor Dorothy PM, our liaison, is in the audience. Okay, is Jennifer like, is her hand up just because it's not down? I'm uh, not sure. No, my hand is up, up. Okay. Um, so um, I thought, so let me just say, I understand if you guys are frustrated 
and and the meetings have been long and 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 it's a lot and it's emotional and it's hard but i thought at the end of the last meeting the decision was to schedule a meeting with everybody back even though it was about their motions because i thought counselor pam had said you need to have them at the table like did and then they so they we knew that they were going to reschedule that meeting when they had that there was a meeting that just happened recently and it was tabled to the 14th is that what happened yes but without i mean they pulled the counselors but they did not pull us to see if we would be available and it is not a joint meeting from my understanding yeah she sent us an email saying that that you know we could be in the audience but it wasn't a meeting with us lynn oh, sent us okay so i didn't i wasn't aware of that okay and so yes counselor pam is in the um waiting room i or in the attendance and i don't know if she would like to come in or not i she could ask her to raise her hand well last time she said she she can't comment on things so i don't know oh, that might be a waste of time yeah no it's yeah and I, it's getting late it's 9 20. i really i need to go my son needs to go to bed so what are She's we doing i think she can clarify Dorothy, would you like, I'll allow, uh, it's weird, it says allow to talk. Um, I press the button. Dorothy, would you like to clarify something right. for us? I'm clarifying that a note was sent to the counselors that if they had new motions or additional motions to send them to Lynn by a certain date. So just to clarify that what you saw as motions are in fact not necessarily the motions. So um, there is a 48 hour rule so I suppose that the motions that we will talk about would be in the packet within 48 hours, but I believe someone can make a motion at the meeting in itself. So it's your guess is as good as mine, um, what the motion will be or how many motions there will be. So I think that you did a good idea. It was a good idea of discussing what was there just to clarify your thoughts and responses, but I have no idea what's gonna be, so. I'm so sorry. no reason. So thank you, Dorothy. So no reason to have a statement because it may change. It definitely may change. Absolutely. Um, you know, so because she she did say I she's trying. Lynn is trying to keep some control of this and to get them in advance and to be able to to give them to us. But um, you know that that she can't necessarily control even that. So. We don't know what it'll be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is late. It is yeah. not 21. Yeah. So I think we should put off making any statement until we find out what they're going to vote on because it it's, as Dorothy clarified for us, it can totally change. So I, I don't know if we have to make a motion for this report to be worked on. Uh, Miss Pat, but um, I'm in agreement with that. I don't know. Uh, we didn't poll the rest of the, the group. Okay, we got thumbs up. Freke, how you feel about it? Let me clarify, this is the reports that would be coming from the youth? Yeah, a, a comprehensive uh, report of July 5th incident that will include you know, accounts of the victims who were there because their voices had been silenced and absent in the reports that we, that the official town had issued. So we need to, you know, get balance in the report. So I'm volunteering to coordinate that and have that report ready for our next meeting. Okay. In that case, I'm not opposed to reports. I would simply be opposed to the reports being considered comprehensive. Well, uh, that's and that's uh, uh, said, uh, Freke, but the one the town put together wasn't comprehensive. So um, it doesn't sound like we're going to get a comprehensive report. The town. So uh, we're going to do our own report from the CSSJC is what it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, and Ms. Pat, and, and, and Ms. Pat, you're going to bring it 
to us anyway at draft form. We'll talk about it because that's how you usually yes. do it, right? Yes. Yeah. It's not like we're going to send it out for it. Yeah. It's, yes. Ms. Pat has, has volunteered to write it and then she'll bring it to the next meeting and then we'll discuss it. I'm going to coordinate the writing of it. Yeah. I'll make it happen. Thank how you. does that sound? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Ms. Pat, I, of course, trust you very well. I know you wouldn't uh, send that off without a leash. Um, I'm simply, again, saying that mm -hmm. um, what we are bringing in is a different report, and it's a report that includes the voices of those who we haven't heard from. And I think that's that's fine. Yeah, we're basically going to do what thank, thank council, some of the thank councillors, not everybody, doesn't want to see happen. So we're going to make it happen. They can't control us. It's going to happen. But right. happen the back is involved. It will happen. That's why I'm the like elder. Is on That's why I'm, the, I'm the elder in this group. Listen to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so as um, <laughs> the elder, yes, Miss Pat. So when you send it for the next meeting, you'll send it to, to Pam and Jen, and then Absolutely. they'll pack yes. it. And then yeah. we'll, we'll review it. Yeah, uh, you'll get it. Yeah. Any other comments regarding that? No. So I don't know when we're going to tackle other priorities, but I would like to get a sense for next meeting if people could, again, review what CSS, CSWG put out and figure out what is our next big priority. The budget in process is, in, is going on now. What are we going to ask for? All right. So I move, I make a motion to adjourn. You get. Nope. There we was have the public, 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 public comment. Forgive me, public. Public comment, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, there are seven attendees. I see one hand up. Hi, good evening. This is Lauren Mills. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you for allowing public comment. Again, I probably should have just did it at the beginning. Um, but I just wanted to uh, share uh, my appreciation because I am um, at home and I'm able to share in the frustration. I like Freaky's um, comment of you know, embracing it, but I really wish, you know, the frustration would be over with. Um, I just also wanted just to say that um, my son who is in the middle school, he has been struggling a lot with, with, you know, getting to school. And today he just told me that he doesn't feel safe in the school. And when a child doesn't feel safe, you know, you can't argue with them. You have to try to help them, you know, find out what's going on. And I would just also like to suggest that the CSSJC that you have listening sessions um, somehow, just like the AHRA is, you know, planning listening sessions in the community. Perhaps you could do um, listening sessions to really find out, you know, what parents are feeling, what youth are feeling because we're usually when we try to approach the institutions like the schools um we're dealing with our own you know children and you don't really get a, a scope or a full understanding of like all the parents who are who are going through certain things um the other thing that i want to point out is something is is amiss i i can't put my finger on it yet um, but I, you know, you just have that, that feeling like something is not right, um, with the post COVID, you know, response to, you know, kids that, that may be dealing with, you know, mental stress or, you know, anxiety or what have you that may have been exacerbated by the, the COVID, um, pandemic. Um, but when we hear like, the teachers on the last town council, they're crying and they're asking for help. I mean, I just don't understand what, where is the response from 
the leaders, such as the superintendent. I I know that you know the history of this town is you know a long history of perhaps like ignoring certain groups, but I just I don't quite get why there's there is still like a a miscommunication or lack of communication with parents and with those you know teachers who are saying that they need help and I, I, I just don't understand why we're still hearing that and there's no response from the school committee it seems or the superintendent so I would just ask that um, your committee help like facilitate some listening sessions with families um, because like I said my my child says that he feels unsafe and I I need to respect him you know and try to figure out what's what's going on um so thank you no one else for tonight All righty. Well, um, is there anything else, <laughs> Allegra, that I'm missing? Um, just looking at the date for our next meeting. Thank um, you. December 14th. Okay. Uh, is that that's the second Tuesday? Yep. Yep. I see um, it. I will. I won't be available, but it's fine. I can just get a report from you all. The whole week, then? Huh? Will it be the whole that week? Um, I'm I'm available like the twelfth, the thirteenth, you know, the week before. But the the fourteenth on, I yeah, it's going to be complicated for me for those how, three days. Yeah. How is other people scheduled that week? Um, let's see. So I will, I think I'll be getting back on that Wednesday from a trip. Okay. I have the housing trust meeting the 15th, I believe, from seven to nine. Um, um, we, don't, we don't want our staff to work on Friday. That's too much for them. Yeah. Um, would Wednesday the seventh work? That's the first Wednesday of the month. That was yes. for me. Yeah, that was for me. Oh, all right. So our next meeting will be Wednesday the seventh. At How about Mr. Frecking? Does that work for you? Seventh. Yes, it does. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so um, I make a motion <laughs> to adjourn. Okay, so Deb second. All in favor? Yes. <laughs> all right. I hope Great. you all have a good Thanksgiving with your loved ones. To but don't have a good forget one. to um, state the time that you adjourned for the record. 9.32. There we go. <laughs> Everybody's like, tired. Good night, everybody. Thank good night. You. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah.